Mike, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Louisiana Saturday night. You are looking live at a sold out Tiger Stadium at Baton Rouge, 92,000 plus. It's the first top 10 showdown of the year. The number nine Virginia Tech Hokies, the number two LSU Tigers on ESPN Saturday primetime college football presented by Hampton. A short time ago, a rain shower swept across Baton Rouge. Now just a light drizzle as Frank Beaver and the Hokies prepare for a road trip. His 21st season as the head man at Virginia Tech. Les Miles, his third year at LSU, came from Oklahoma State, won the SEC West back in 2005, was a Sugar Bowl champion a year ago, pounding Notre Dame. And now tonight, in the first big one of the year, in the Southeastern Conference, it's LSU hosting Virginia Tech of the ACC. I'm Brett Musburger along with Kirk Herbstreit and Lisa Salters. Nice to have you along with us. Kirk, what a scene we've got. This is what you wait for. You know, this is one of those games that back in early spring, you start to pull out the college football schedule and look to see the big intersectional matchups. And the one that stood out above all the rest was Virginia Tech going on the road to come to Baton Rouge. And now it's here. And we're going to find out a lot more about both these teams, Brent, in about uh, three hours. Virginia Tech won the toss and elected to defer. That means that LSU will go on the attack first. And there is major speed back deep. Early Doucette and Trimden Holloway. The youngster over on the right hand side, folks, has run a legitimate 10 2. He'll be a candidate for the United States Olympic team come next spring. Jared Develli with the ball on the tee, and there is Early Doucette, their ace receiver back two, along with number eight. So we'll see how Frank Beamer, who through the years has been one of the best special teams architects in all of college football. Choose your poison, Frank. Here we go. <laughs> They'll take the little fella from the 10. Looking for daylight. Trying to get an alley wide. Tech strings him out. Down inside the 15 yard line. Great coverage by the Virginia Tech. Teams. And now to introduce that LSU offense, here's their wide receiver, Early Doucette. The quarterback we got, my main man, Matt Flynn from Tyler, Texas, better known as Salt from the Salt and Pepper Connection, so look out for that. Uh, in the backfield, we have Keelan Williams from Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, let's get to some of the big guys in the trenches. We have Herman, a.k.a. The House, uh, Saran C.B. Black, and Will Arnold from Mississippi, and that's the offensive line. The senior, Matt Flynn, this is his first start in Baton Rouge. Has started two previous games on the road and neutral. Incomplete second down. Now, let's meet that Virginia Tech defense. And here's their coordinator, Bud Foster. I really like this group. Our defense is led by our front four. Uh, we have a veteran group. It's led by Carlton Powell, who's our bell cow inside. We have two outstanding linebackers and All-Americans, Vince Hall and Xavier Deby, two outstanding football players. And we'll return three stars in our secondary, led by All-American Brandon Flowers. And folks, you can follow those two linebackers. Number nine is Hall. Number 11 is DB. They'll take you to the football all night long. Perhaps the best inside tandem in all the college football. Back with a base running play, and he split the linebackers for a first down to the 25. Jacob Hester, the senior from Shreveport. We're going to get a good look tonight at one of the more versatile players in all of college football. Jacob Hester seems to do it all for this team. They'll line him up as a tailback. And one thing I love about him is his instincts as a runner. You would think about him in his past as a fullback, yet you can see there the vision that he has cuts back and picks up a first down. Flynn sets the play from the shotgun. Hester right alongside. There's the option look and then the pitch and it was read perfectly and Chris Ellis making the stop. Matt Flynn takes over this offense. There is a flag down here on that first down play for the Tigers. But Matt Flynn has the tough task of trying to fill the shoes of Jamarcus Russell. He is a senior and one thing I found interesting getting ready for this game. It's a personal foul brand on Virginia Tech. After the play, 
Unnecessary roughness. Number 18 on the defense. 15 that, yards. Automatic. First that, down. Brandon Flowers, their All-American corner. Let's take a look here, Kurt. I think it came after the whistle. Virginia Tech determined tonight to match the enthusiasm and energy of LSU playing at home. That time, Brandon Flowers is caught for a little bit of an excessive hit after the whistle. It's an ACC crew, in case you're wondering. Jeff Flanagan is our referee here tonight, and Mike Webster is his umpire. They have come on the road now. Virginia Tech of the ACC. Incomplete and intended for Brandon LaFell, sophomore from Houston. Well, Gary Croton, the new offensive coordinator here at LSU, told me something interesting. He said, you know, one thing about Matt Flynn is he has great athletic ability. He probably has a future in the NFL because of his size, but he took advantage of his time as a backup. Instead of sulking and, and pouting as a backup to Jamarcus Russell, he prepared every single week as if he was the starter. And now that he's the guy, that has helped him as much as anything. Second down and ten. Option look, Flynn cuts back, and the Hokies were ready for it. They jumped it right in the middle of the hole. Let us check in with Reese Davis, Race. All right, Brent, the Georgia and South Carolina game is over in Athens. It was an offensive struggle. Matthew Stafford trying to save the dogs late, heaving it high into the air in a four-point game. And for the first time since 2001, off the deflection, Jasper Brinkley, the interception, that seals it. South Carolina won it 16 to 12. Yeah, the old ball coach got a big one tonight, and Charles Scott now has checked in as the tailback here. Hester lines up as fullback. He'll switch back and forth. Complete. The fell for a first and ten. Everybody knows about LSU's defense and how aggressive they are. You're going to see two of the more aggressive defenses in college football. But Bud Foster brings, he loves to bring his two linebackers, picked up very nicely by LSU. And Matt Flynn puts the ball to the outside where only LaFell can make the catch. And it's another first down, first down for the Tigers. LSU moves into Hokie territory for the first time. That base 4-3 look, Bud Foster's defense. Hall and the DB trying to get a negative play against him, but Hester's just pounding up the middle, and they are doing a tremendous job of blocking on those two linebackers here early. They are getting on him, Kirk, right now. Well, they're, they're being overly aggressive by attacking, and that time Bud Foster, again, the defensive coordinator from Virginia Tech, took a little bit of a gamble by slanting his defensive line into the boundary, and Jacob Hester recognized that as soon as he had the handoff and cut it back against the grain for another nice gain here. Second down, shotgun. Holiday is to the left side. Breaks, looks in his direction, comes back to LaFell again, and on him is Macho Harris in a heartbeat. But it's another first down. Tremendous balance here to open the game by LSU. They've had an opportunity to mix it up. They're in rhythm right now as an offense. Virginia Tech has decided to come out with a lot of blitzing, so they're going to the quick game and getting Matt Flynn to get rid of the ball quickly. Impressive drive, and now he'll look over to the sideline to see if there's an audible being signaled in. He changes up, gives the call to the center, the left guard, and he gets straight on the blocking. Inside handoff, Hester again, and that time the Hokies jumped it at the point of attack. Cam Chancellor, their rover back, came up and made sure that play was forced back in. Let's go back to the play by Brandon Flowers, the personal foul that gave him LSU 15 yards. It really gave him some momentum. But Foster realizes there's a lot on his defense tonight. The margin of error is very small on the road in one of the tougher environments in college football. They can't afford to do little things like that, making mental mistakes to give LSU second life. Now the tight end flexes back. Zinger goes as an H back. and. Uh, Whistle sounds, and this is going to be against LSU. Ball start. Number 71, offense. Five yards. Still second down. That is senior Carnell Stewart, but this is his first year as a starter. He's from River Ridge, Louisiana. Brent, as you know, the reason the margin of error is so slight is when the Virginia Tech offense comes out here with a quarterback and Sean Glennon in this atmosphere, it's going to be tough to pick up yardage. Field position is crucial tonight. Flynn, shovel pass to the inside. Hester breaks free, headed for the end zone and stopped just short of it. What a good 
good looking play and Jacob Hester the senior from Shreveport pounds into the five yard line. That's a 28 yard gain folks. They're attacking the middle of this D and this is this gives you an idea of the versatility of Matt Flynn. Does he have the, the ability to throw the football Jamarcus Russell. Probably not. But does he give you a quarterback with great instincts and very comfortable and sitting to the pocket that time he dumps it off a little shovel pass. I always think of Doug Flutie flipping it like that. That's a great play by Flynn. Scott the tailback Hester the fullback straight ahead. They will frequently line him up and there's your touchdown. They line him up as the fullback. They use that against Mississippi State before the night's over. If they get into that red zone you will see number 18 switch from the tail to the fullback and it gives them a second dangerous runner. As you talk about an opening drive 10 plays 87 yards five runs five passes and a touchdown. Colt David. That's right. Colt David. Right to the heart of the target. LSU, like Kirk said, very impressive on that opening drive. Can the Hokies answer against the LSU D? We'll find out. This telecast available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. An impressive drive, Kirk. Unbelievable way to start for LSU. You get so excited to come in here and watch the Tigers and watch the defense come out, and the offense goes right down the field and mixes it up so well. As I said, balance to me is the key in today's game of college football. Whether you run the spread attack or you're more conventional, and to go 10 plays, five rush, and five pass, 87 yards in four minutes, business like, methodical drive right down the field. So, Virginia Tech. Sends a couple of wide receivers back deep for Josh Jaspers. Kickoff. Josh Morgan, number two, and Eddie Royal, number four, are back deep. And here comes number four. Royal has a seam. Crosses midfield to the 48. Answers with a tremendous return on the kickoff. And now for a 30 30, let's check in with Reese Davis. All right, Brent, Alex Rodriguez has gone yard twice for the Yankees against the Royals. Numbers 50 and 51 of the season. He's driven in 138. By the way, 48 of those home runs have come as a third baseman. That ties a major league record. Tennis, Roger Federer going for his fourth straight U.S. Open title. He takes out Nikolai Davidenko. He's got Novak Djokovic in the final. Sports Center after the game. Stay current with ESPN News. A 37 yard kickoff return. They come back with Brandon Orr, their tailback, and he is jumped by the heart of that LSU defense, which is the defensive line. But let's in meet the Virginia Tech offense, and here's Coach Frank Beamer. We hope you'll see an improved offense this week. We're led by Sean Glennon, our quarterback. We think we've got a good tailback in Brandon Orr. We really like those fullbacks, uh, our wide receiving core, tight ends. We think we've got good ones there. Our offensive line is led by Dwayne Brown. He's tough, and he's getting all those other guys tougher. His right guard's plenty tough, too. Sergio Render is not an overly impressive opening week by this offensive line, and now they're blocking perhaps the best defensive front in college football. On his first pass, dropped by Morgan. Should have had it on the slant, and that won't help him because here comes third and long, and let's meet this LSU defense. Here's coordinator Bo Pelini. Taking a look at the LSU defense, we're led by All-American defensive tackle Glenn Dorsey. He's backed up in the middle by uh, linebacker Ollie Highsmith and uh, a very talented group around him. And our veteran secondary is led by strong safety Craig Stelts, who started the year last week with three interceptions. Fellini and Foster, two of the best defensive coordinators in all of college football, here tonight. Fellini. Joined the Miles staff and number 72 Dorsey goes over against the right guard and there's their first sack of the night. Curtis Taylor the free safety his first year as a starter for the Tigers rolls in and there was heat up front. 
This is where Bo Pelini as a defensive coordinator really excels at attacking a pass protection of an offense. In this case, he's got Taylor coming off the side. He creates confusion with the offensive line. Linebacker and safety comes up. The back takes one of them, and Taylor comes free on the outside. You'll see that as a reoccurring theme tonight on third down for this LSU defense. So they cannot advance the kickoff return. Go negative on the yardage, and Brent Bowden into punt for the first time. Doucette. Signals fair catch at the 14 yard line and that's where Doucette and his offensive buddies will put it in play. If you just joined us LSU looked like the number two team and perhaps the number one on their opening drive. ESPN's college football primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels at Hampton. We love having you here and in part by Burger King who remind you to have it your way. Well, a few years back, these two teams played in Blacksburg, and Virginia Tech won that game, and now they're down here for a meeting. Frank Beamer coming into this stadium for his first game, and we will see if young Flynn can drive this offense again. They look crisp, didn't they, folks? I thought the most surprising thing about that drive, Kirk, was that they didn't shy away from those two great linebackers. They no. came right after. Yes, they did. Attacked them. It's a big series for Virginia Tech's defense. On first and ten, and they rise to that challenge. And you know, this is Virginia Tech's first road trip since the tragic events of last April 16th, and the LSU band certainly paid its respects. And for more, let's go down below now to Lisa Salters. Lisa? Well, Brent, the Tech players weren't even out here on the field for that rather moving tribute. As you said, LSU's band playing the Virginia Tech alma mater. That has never happened before here in Death Valley. But players know that that kind of compassion is going to be there for them, right or wrong, good or bad. They are the team that people are pulling for. Sean Glennon said, hey, the tragedy, people looking for us for healing. We know it's going to be there all season. Right now, they've got to stop this offense, Lisa, as Brandon LaFell, number one, gets open running a post and takes it on down the field. But to, to just follow up on Lisa's story, uh, the college community across this nation is helping Virginia Tech heal, and, and I'm sure they're going to have tributes like this uh, all throughout the rest of the season after that just horrible, horrible, unspeakable tragedy back in April. Kirk, they're rolling this LSU team. Well, LSU, a big, a big, big pass there, and that's a, that's something that LSU is looking for is somebody besides early Doucette on the outside to make plays. And boy, LaFell showing some breakaway speed there once he got through that secondary. 56-yard pass play, and now Perilou checks in. There's their backup quarterback Ryan, Ryan Perilou. Perilou runs the quarterback draw, coming out. He uh, got a lot of reps during practice the other day. He's a young man who originally committed verbally to Texas, changed his mind, came here to Play Baton Rouge. Holding number 74, offense. 10 yards, replay first down. I thought it was interesting, Brent, that Gary Croton and Les Miles took a little heat. For a 45 to nothing performance last peak last week, people thought, boy, it was a little vanilla on offense. Well, I mean, they were in control of the game for the most part. And I think tonight you're going to start to see a few of the wrinkles that a lot of the Tiger fans have been waiting to see beginning tonight against a better opponent. Well, on the quarterback draw, you watch what the center does. And of course, he was flagged for holding on that play. And now Flynn checks back in and Charles Scott. And he makes his way close to the 20 yard line, forcing number one, Macho Harris, to make the stop. Boss man likes this play. Well, they have great skill, but they also can get very, very physical. You're going to get a good block here, a seal block, and then you'll see Doucette come in as a great wide receiver, a first round receiver, showing that he's willing to get tough and get physical as well. They seal the outside, they outflank the defense, and there's the speed of Charles Scott to pick up another big, big game. For the Tigers. A lot of formations to put Doucette in slot. He is the closest to the left tackle. Flynn looks though the other way. He's got one on one. Telfair, there was some bumping, no flag. And we will check in with Reese Davis. 
All right, guys, we're going to put our finger on the prime time pulse. South Florida has a lead on Auburn. Game going on on ESPN2, getting late in the first quarter there. And, of course, the Nextel Cup Series race on ABC at Richmond, the Rock and Roll 400. Keep an eye on just about everything right now. South Florida against Auburn. Auburn's on the move. We'll watch that one for you. I know it's early in this game, but a third and six play for this Virginia Tech defense, a huge play. Flynn gets time, and they'll swing Scott. And Scott makes it first down at the 11-yard line. Beginning to wonder if Virginia Tech's in a bit of a haze. They're shell-shocked coming down here to Tiger Stadium. They've known about the stadium. They've known about the atmosphere. And next thing you know, they get on the road, and it becomes a reality. And this is not the start that Frank Beamer and the Hokies envisioned. Scott stays in as the tailback. Gary Croton, very creative offensively. Scott broke the first tackle and battled his way down toward the seven yard line. And Vince Hall, who had 13 tackles a week ago, makes the style. Anytime you lose a, a quarterback who's going to be drafted first overall. You lose two wide receivers in the first round and, and you lose a safety in the first round and you come back the next year and you're ranked number two in the country and you don't miss a beat. I mean that, that says a lot about the recruiting and what LSU is doing with Les Miles at the helm as a head coach. This team looks just as strong if not stronger this year than they looked last year. Hester back in as fullback. Play fake. Flynn over the middle deep incomplete. Threw it out of the back of the end zone. But you've been following the game a long time and you, you you've seen teams over the years lose great personnel and coaches at premier programs don't like to talk about rebuilding but a lot of times it does take a little time to be able to restock the, the offense and, and to be able to have the same kind of firepower but you know, they, they miss those players but they they've had some some new players step up. Well Nick Saban always said that Matt Flynn could play that yeah. Marcus Russell was a very special talent when he recruited the two of them and now here's Flynn the senior from Tyler Texas. He's in there on third down. He's going to run this one. Touchdown LSU. Two series two touchdowns. Ninety two thousand. Minus the Virginia Tech fans celebrate. Boy, Matt Flynn looks relaxed out there, Brent. Another great drive here. And watch the center come around and lead it. What I love is he gets to the outside and then he comes back. And this is just pretty good, pretty good job of running the football. It's almost like a zone play by a tailback. He stretched it. He waited for the defense to over pursue and cut it back for the score. Steady as a six shooter. Colton David adds another extra point. It's a Louisiana Saturday night, all right. And these fellas, they're dancing barefoot already. Great time of the year to be a sports fan. College football starting to heat up, and NFL moves center stage, and then a Monday night returns to ESPN. We got a doubleheader for you, folks. So let's stress the time. Seven Eastern. Ravens take on the Bengals. And then after that, it'll be the Cardinals and the San Francisco 49ers. And Pucci did a little bit short here this time. One of the upbacks fields it on the 25 yard line to the 26. Well, Kirk, Sean Glennon and the Hokies need a drive. Well, Sean Glennon comes in. I think a bit fragile coming into this game not only dealing with this environment you know I, I think you go back to the way he finished last season in the bowl game against Georgia the way things got started last year, last week against East Carolina this offense was out of sync and now he finds himself down 14 to nothing going up against the best defense in the country on the road. Here's or. Down at the 29 yard line, and uh, we talked to Sean Glennon about playing in this SEC environment. I'm excited for it, really. Um, 
I mean, I, I don't, I'm not wishing for the earth to shake underneath me, but it's fun going into a hostile environment uh, against a, you know, I was the number two team in the country and, and playing a game like that. You know, it's a lot of fun playing at home, you know, having a crowd behind you, but sometimes it's just as much fun to go into an environment like that and kind of have the odds against you. Mr. Dorsey is now at the right defensive tackle. He'll flop from time to time. Glennon drops it off into the middle to Orr, and rotating back is Tyson Jackson. He's perhaps a future number one draft choice down the road too. He's only a junior. Well, Brent, the thing about Sean Glennon, and he, he he does have 14 start, 14 starts under his belt. The thing you worry about in his case is confidence and maybe a lack of confidence. He's talking about being confident, but yet when you're booed at your own stadium by the student body and they're all begging for the backup, the true freshman Tyrod Taylor, you got to wonder what kind of effect that could have on you. He needs a first down here. This is the third down. It was three and out on their first series. Moves the pocket hard to the right, throws a one hopper. Had Morgan, who was covered over there on that side. Danny McCray, the sophomore from Houston, had coverage. And it's three and gone. Brent, you're exactly right. He's got to make a decision as a starting quarterback with 14 games under his belt. Now, Josh Morgan is open for the first down. By the time he decides to try to get it to him, he's covered, and there's no chance of picking up the first down. He's got to do a better job of leading this team and making quicker decisions. So here's Bowden into punt again. Early set, another fair catch runs up to the 26 yard line. Now, the thing to consider tonight, and what Frank Beamer has to consider over there on that far side, will he use his freshman right behind Glennon right there, wearing number five? That is Tyrod Taylor, perhaps the best all purposed freshman quarterbacks in the country. And he is the real deal. Now, I had a private conversation with Frank. And he said it's going to strictly depend on how this game unfolds. And Kurt, you know a lot more about his skills. Well, he runs a 4 3 9 40. He's got a 39 inch vertical. He's what you're looking for to run a versatile attack. Pound with Hester. Hester's running to daylight up the middle. And I want to tell you, they are getting on those two great linebackers. They're coming right up the gut on a very good defense. But what they're able to do here is they just come right down the defensive line. They attack down. The tight end comes down. The tackle comes down. And then they kick out with the backside guard. And it opened up another big hole. But Brent, it's interesting to see this mentality, this LSU offense. They're not shying away, obviously. They've got a lot of confidence. And they're going right after Hall and Adibi. And uh, Surin Black, the big tackle, got on number 11 that time. And that was a total eclipse when he got out on it. Flam middle high incomplete. I want to finish a thought about Tyrod Taylor and Brandon Flowers appears to to be down but do you go to a true freshman on the road in a tough environment where he really doesn't have any experience and I know he gives you upside with athletic ability but it's just the inexperience of being in this atmosphere. Here's how Frank answered that. He said he is beyond his years when he's watched him and he had played Lane Stadium back in the spring mm -hmm. in front of a very very large crowd and he was impressed with how he handled it. now he then went on to say but it's a little bit different I was say, when you come in here the okay. spring game at Tiger Stadium on a he, Saturday night he conceded yeah. now and you say well does he want a red shirt him well he may not be around that long anyway if you get a great great freshman prospect I mean you just ask Pete Carroll out in Southern California you get him in there you use him and if if that rush becomes something that the Hokies can't handle Frank at least has to give it thought. Rashad Carmichael checks in now into that defensive backfield for the Hokies. Here's the toss play to Hester. Makes the most of it to the 46 yard line. Let's go to Reese again. Brent on ESPN2, South Florida trying to make a statement for the Big East against Auburn and former Alabama signee Mike Ford going in for South Florida against the Tigers. And the Bulls are up 14-3 in the first. The nation's two longest winning streaks coming to an end. Boise State loses. BYU about to go down. That'll leave Wisconsin at 10 in a row and playing UNLV tonight as the longest.
Reese, write it down. Mr. Locker up there in Seattle can play a little football. That's an entirely different looking Husky team. This is early Doucette. Stopped at the line of scrimmage about the uh, 46 yard line. And uh, Kirk, what impresses you about some of the things that Lee Reese has been reporting on? Here? Well, the scores, I watched all the games throughout today, and we'll get into some of that uh, throughout this broadcast. But the, the Michigan score to me just blew me away. Watching that game, watching how good Oregon looked, and how slow again Michigan's defense looked just shocked me. There's a flag down on this punt. It hits just at the goal line and comes out to the one. But let me go back. The kicker. There is a flag. Four yard line. Patrick Fisher was the punter. The linesman over here on the near side in front of the LSU bench. Now here is that new formation that they're using. You can see the splits. Illegal shift. Offense. Number nine. Billy be five yards from the previous spot. Three kick. You know, that looked like your wedge there. That was uh is that a, one of your wedges there? That's just, bringing it, just bringing it back <laughs> like on a, with a string? Don't I wish I could. <laughs> yeah. So it comes on back. It was a beautiful thing to watch. But uh, now let's check out this punt formation. A lot of folks are really nervous about this. All right, there's three protectors back. Now Beamer says, yeah, we can block one against this. Look Not easy, but we can return one. They pick him up. They let him on through, and they were closing in that time. And that penalty is going to cost them oh, about 16 fair yards. Goal. That fair catch, he made it at the 17-yard line. Eddie Royal. So uh, now we'll see if Virginia Tech can can move the football. And uh, here is a young man, Dorsey, who would have been a first-round draft choice. I think he surprised everybody, including the coaching staff, when he said he wanted to come back. I know you talked to him. Yeah, I I, uh, I thought he would leave because you see so many of the players who are dominant decide to go out. He wanted to come back. He wanted a chance to win a national championship. LSU's been 11 and two, finishing the top three the last couple of years. He says this year they want to get over the hump, and he wants to be a part of it. He's a top five prospect, folks. He's at right. Defensive tackle looking for the LSU side. They double team him. He can't get there. Glennon's in trouble, gonna have to take off. And he's down to the 27. I found it interesting this week. You know, sometimes there's a little bit of talk back and forth between teams. And this week, Sergio Render, who's a great player at Virginia Tech, said, I'm not gonna back down. Both of us put our pants on the same way. I feel like if I can put my hands on him, I can put him on the ground. Anybody can be pancaked. Said that on Tuesday. Now he can't put his hands on him right now. Whenever he lines up Dorsey on the right side, he's matched against the other guard. You might want to keep that in mind as you watch this game unfold and uh, diving attempt for an interception. Taylor, it's incomplete. So and first, so here's the lock. Yeah, the first thing I said to him, I said, Did you see the quote? He said, Oh, yeah, I saw it. He goes, The only thing I can say is be careful what you wish for. And I said, Do you have it up in your locker? And he said, Yep, there it is in his locker all week. He's been thinking about this opportunity, and I'm sure Sergio has been thinking about it on the other side. But I want to make sure people understand Sergio Render, the 315 pounds, number 70 when they go head to head. That's a great matchup. Virginia Tech searching for its first first down of the night here in Baton Rouge. This is third and very makeable. Three down. Come after him, intercepted. Picked off by Craig Stelts, who picked off three last week against Mississippi State. Seven interceptions already for Bo Pelini's Ballhawks in well less than two games. Bo Pelini loves third down, loves to attack, loves to come after a quarterback and an offensive line, and it forced Sean Glennon to get rid of the ball before he was ready to throw, and therefore he wasn't able to even recognize that Craig Stelts was sitting right in front of his wide receiver. He threw it right to him for another easy interception for Stelts. That's his fourth this season. <laughs> it's a pretty good year. Two games, four interceptions. A speed back, Keelan Williams. They are four deep at the tail. And Flynn kept it off a beautiful ball fake. 
Made it to the 13 yard line. So number 15 who scored a touchdown a short time ago. Said I like that running stuff. And that's the wrinkle that he'll bring to this offense that you couldn't see with Jamarcus Russell. And that's what Gary Croton the offensive coordinator has brought to this offense. I thought it was interesting. Gary Croton said you know I, I came in and I wanted to learn their offense. I wanted to learn the, their terminology. I didn't want to bring in an entire new offense. So it's a combination of Les Miles' his style and what Gary Croton wants to bring in. And that, that spread zone spread look is what he brought in. Quinn Johnson and as the lead fullback in front of Williams trying to open it up. Hall stepped up into the point of attack and joined with his defensive front and jamming that play up. Nikos Brown also helped him. This would be stunning if they pop a third one in here. Oh. I mean, you have 24 plays at this point. I just love to see this. You have 13 runs, you have 11 passes. Gary Croton right in the middle doing a great job right now of controlling this offense and the tempo of the offense. Here's Williams and he has stopped for negative. And Brown was in there and Chancellor came up hard from that rover spot as the Seconds tick away here and end our first quarter, but a very impressive one for LSU. Great start for LSU. That was the first time we've seen Virginia Tech's defense get up there and, and stuff the offensive line of LSU. So Nikos Brown comes off the bench. The sophomore gives that defensive front a lift. And Virginia Tech turn this around. We're about to find out. So we are back on fourth down LSU will attempt to field goal. It's 14 nothing as we start the second quarter. That's not good news for the Hokies. That is not good news when you take on Les Miles. 18 and one when leading after the first quarter. Old Michigan man was a tackle for Bo Schimbeck. Colt David with a 30 yard field goal attempt and it's 17 nothing just like that. So after the turnover the Miles team. Turns it on in. It's an interesting story about Miles and Bo Schemblecker. I'm going to tell you about it. He was a businessman after he graduated, and uh, it just didn't satisfy him. He wanted to go back, thought it be a graduate assistant. He told us he was making around 30 G's a year. He went to talk to Bo, and Bo said, Uh uh, you don't want to be a coach. Long hours, you don't make any money. Let's go on back where you belong. Get out of here. Let's Miles. Beat on Bo Schimbeckler's door for three solid months. And finally, Bo says, You really want to do this? And he said, Yes, I do, coach. He said, Okay, eight grand a year, you're on. Les said, Good thing I wasn't married, I'd have never made it. And then he went back, became an assistant coach, and the rest, as they say, is history. He, he married lovely Katie, who happened to be the basketball coach at the University of Michigan, has deep, deep ties, and the one thing he's going to have to handle all year long. There's going to be a buzz. There's going to be a serious buzz about Les Miles in Ann Arbor next year. You can take it to the bank. And he handles it sort of this way. He says, Look, I got a job down here I love. We got a great team. That's all I want to think about. And then the next breath, but I do love my people and I hurt for them up there in Ann Arbor. Yeah, I, I would just say that uh, it's just my opinion. He's enjoying himself. This is one of the greatest jobs in college football, but you can never underestimate a man's heart. And if the Michigan job gets open and they make an offer to Les Miles, it's just my opinion that Les Miles will go to Ann Arbor to become the next head coach at Michigan if, in fact, they offer him that position. As much as he's loving it right now, I believe he would leave it. It's not about money, it's about following a dream, following his heart, and having a chance to coach at his alma mater. After leaving Michigan, he worked for McCartney out at Boulder with Colorado, went to the Dallas Cowboys. Also coached head coach at Oklahoma State had some big wins against OU when he was over there. Let's check in now with Reese Davis Reese. All right Brent told you South Florida jumped on top of Auburn on ESPN 2 but the Tigers have been looking for a spark in the backfield and that man Mario Fannin may be giving it to him. Auburn scoring to cut it to 14 10 early second quarter on ESPN 2. Texas starting to flex its muscle. TCU can do nothing on offense, and the Horns have a seven point lead early in the fourth quarter. True, Texas starting to come back. And Auburn in the dog fight. Big East keeps gaining credibility, don't they, folks? Here's Brandon Orr trying to stretch it. 
cuts back to the 37 yard line. We keep going back to this because it's a very important factor in whether or not Virginia Tech has a chance to come back in this game. You know, last year they played Georgia, great team from the SEC, had a big lead until late in the game. Sean Glennon started to self destruct, turned the ball over. Four turnovers in the second half gave Georgia a chance to come back and win the game. So it's a new season, a new start, first pass of the year. Interception, East Carolina. He was booed there by the student section. Not a great start. Now he's on the road, as we say, and I'm sure he's feeling a little rattled trying to get adjusted to the speed of this LSU defense. Let's keep an eye on him tonight and the mistakes and decisions that he makes. Or plunging straight ahead, and that's the first first down of the night. So the Hokies move the chains for the first time, and wouldn't a drive bring a sense of confidence to Beamer's troops here now? Well, when anybody thinks about Virginia Tech, they, they think about the ability to run the football. But against a great defense like this that is very confident, they're going to try to take away Brandon Orr and play a lot of people up close to the line of scrimmage and try to put the game into the hands of Sean Glennon. That's why his decision making is so important. Another blitz. And Glenn he changing sees it. up. He sees it. Changes the call. And uh, flag down as he was handing the ball to Orr. Flag came down, and you can see the white bodies were there. Not to mention. No, I mean, it's so tough. There was Jonathan Zenon. The other corner was coming up after him. Part of the snap. Ball start. 76 on the offense. Five yards. Great job of Sean Glennon in, in, in doing his homework and recognizing that there's going to be a blitz coming from the left side from Zane in the corner. He makes the right checks, but this is the tough part of being on the road. You're on the road trying to communicate with your offensive line. He thought he had everything ready to go, and right before he snapped the ball, Dwayne Brown, the left tackle, jumped. It's another part of the, the difficulties of dealing with playing on the road in college football for these quarterbacks to deal with. Here's Glennon under enormous pressure. Steps away that time and throws it. He did a terrific job of avoiding a loss because Kirsten Pittman, a backup defensive end, was all over him that Boy, time. He shot right through the offense and got to the outside. And one thing about Pittman is he was hurt two years ago. He's come back hungry. He gets right by Brandon Orr. You're right, Glennon does a nice job. But the thing is, once he gets outside, the thing that stands out to me is that everybody was covered. It seemed like there were two defensive backs on all three of his receivers that were downfield. Second in a bunch. Sam Wheeler, the tight end, has been very, very quiet. He had a big game against East Carolina. He's lined up right tight end right now. There's that short drop and hit on the release. That's an incomplete pass, and that was Ali Highsmith. Talking about first rounders, folks. Number seven could get there too. He's a senior from Miami. What happens with this this defense is not only are they incredibly skilled up front, <clears throat> they confuse the offensive line and the running backs when it comes to pass protection. And once you try to figure out where the blitz is coming from, the quarterback doesn't have any time and the receivers don't have any time to get away from man coverage so the quarterback has to just throw it away before he gets sacked. This is third and 15 and when they go to that nickel look with three down linemen they step into the gap and they're still coming and it'll be a punt situation again. I mean they were all over Brandon Orr that time. And been another great job by this LSU defense and I'm telling you right now I think you and I agree with this I think most people who watch teams from across the country this is the best defense in the country and Bo Pelini is one of the best defensive coordinators in the country and man has he shown up tonight you know I'm not willing to say that they're better than USC's defense right they're right, they're right there they're pretty good now. they're right there right there Bowden with early do set back They were coming. The set lets it go, and it'll be down at about the 33 yard line right there. LSU of the SEC, dominating Virginia Tech of the ACC. 
Aerial coverage for tonight's game, courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse Airship, Bloomin' Onion One. The Outback Steakhouse Airship specializes in aerial sports coverage, so look for that Bloomin' Onion at sporting events throughout the year. 92,000 plus. And you know there's such many tributes are are being done. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about one right after this play with Keelan Williams and Sean Jordan. There is the pistol. Those are plays for the University of Nevada. The quarterback at a short punt and look at him break the pistol wide. He's got breakout speed now. Touchdown, Keelan Williams, 67 yards. They fired a six shooter that time. You pay special attention to this formation. Short punt quarterback right in front of the tailback, and you can use option, and Croton's been working on it here for the last couple of weeks. What well, you have to remember, Brent, is that Matt Flynn doesn't have any background at all of running option in high school. I asked Gary Croton about that. Did he run any option? He said no. This really, this year is the first time we've worked with him to get to the point where he's comfortable and confident dealing with the option. Coach Alt developed this offense out in Reno. Has been very, very successful with it. You know the story about Croton, head coach at BYU, later became the offensive coordinator at Oregon. He saw plenty of Nevada tape, and when he came here, he said, why not? And there is Croton. Now take a look at the formation as they start this play. There is the quarterback. That is the pistol. Yep, he's up tight, much tighter than your traditional shotgun formation. Watch this. He has to be ready quick, but it's to block by Doucette on the outside by, on Brandon Flowers. And I think a lot of LSU fans, they love Jacob Hester. But the last couple days we've been in town, I've heard a lot of people say, when is Keelan Williams going to get his chance to make a play? Great blocking downfield. I mentioned Doucette, Keith Zingers down there making a great block. And then Williams, not only with the speed, but the tough running to be able to break a tackle. Once he gets to the open field, he is gone. PAT by The one thing I didn't think we'd see is a blowout. Yeah, I, that's one thing I didn't think. But we've we'd been have. talking about it since Thursday that we've been in town and we've, we've noticed everybody from LSU is confident. The coaches have been confident. The players that we talked to, kind of a, a swagger about them. I think they were expecting a blowout. I thought Virginia Tech's defense would come in here and have a chance to compete. After all, the last two years, they've been the number one defense in college football. We were just at a break and we said, boy, it's it's 17 to nothing. What is Virginia Tech going to have to do to get back into this game? And I talked about where the defense is going to have to make a play. They've got to create a turnover. They've got to give Sean Glenn a short field. Well, so much for that plan. Keep it short. Keep it away from Royal. This is Perez. He is down. And uh, Lisa, there have been some uh, very nice uh, tributes for the Virginia Tech family. That's right, Brent. One of them, uh, a nine foot tall, hand stitched quilt that was presented to the uh, Virginia Tech Alumni Association. It's like a giant mural, and it's got the Virginia Tech logo in the middle with different uh, different panels of the Louisiana culture all around it. 25 students helped to stitch it, and three are very unlikely seamsters. Three LSU linemen, Herman Johnson, Saron Black, and Carnell Stewart. It was Johnson's mom who asked the kids if they would do it, and during Katrina, they said the people helped them out, and it was something that they gladly did because they thought it would be a cool gesture and a way to give back. Right? Yeah, very nice, and uh, Lewis checks in as the running back. So Orr will sit this series out, and uh, he gets the carry. Not to make matters worse, but this this Virginia Tech offense is not only off to a slow start they're not necessarily equipped to get down 24 nothing against anybody let alone in this atmosphere against this defense as I said I think you have a fragile offense last week against East Carolina Sean Glennon was harassed the entire game he was sacked four times they had mental errors the entire game dropped balls by the receivers poor throws by Sean Glennon and now to start off like this I, I think they're rattled obviously in a very tough position to get back into the game. Time out. Using up too much time. There's the clock wound down. So there's the first time out here and 
So far it's been a half to forget. As far as Virginia Tech is concerned. LSU soaring tonight. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors. Driven to thrill. And Elon. For home, auto, or equity loans, go to elon.com. Elon. Radically simple. <laughs> yeah, folks, now that's a pudding cat. That's the new Mike. That is Mike the Sixth. Wasn't brought into the stadium here tonight. He's got a palace over here. I'd like to stay over there with him. Oh, you know, Mike, get over there in that other bed over there. Look at that down there to the left. Folks, that's a million and a half dollar habitat for him. Snap the second down pass off, and they get a first down. So he puts it in the hands of Justin Harper, who has 4 3 3 speed, and Justin does the rest. Well, these receivers from Virginia Tech, when they're given a chance to make plays, they've got to be able to separate, but you have to have time to be able to separate for your quarterback to be able to throw. That time, just a quick throw, very simple. And Harper's got the size at 6 4, but he also runs a 4 3. So, in as much man coverage as they're going to see tonight, you make one defensive back miss, you can pick up a lot of yardage. Here's Brandon Orr. Breaks the first tackle. But three defenders stretch it out. No chance. Luke Sanders and Curtis Taylor. Let's check in with Reese. All right, Brent, the primetime pulse on the family of networks on ESPN2. South Florida just intercepted a Brandon Cox pass in the end zone, so the Bulls continue to hold a 14-10 lead on the Tigers. On ABC, there's a red flag in the race, just over 100 laps to go in Richmond in the Rock and Roll 400. Tony Stewart is leading Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson on his tail, hoping to catch up. Red flag conditions right now. They'll get it started in a bit. All right, Reese, and here it is, second down. And long with LSU leading Virginia Tech 24 to nothing. Glennon from the shotgun snaps one off low and incomplete. And Harper wanted the ball up over there that time. And so it'll be third and 13. Well, you mentioned USC might have the best defense. And I, I think LSU has the best defense. And time will tell. They're both, they're both supreme uh, when it comes to college football. But when you have corners like Chevis Jackson at one side, number 21, and the, on the other side, 19, Jonathan Zenon, it allows you to be so creative in what you can do. And Pete Carroll and Bo Pelini happen to be very good friends from the time that they spent together in the NFL. <laughs> and you look at their styles and how confusing they are. It's uh, it's no wonder that those are the top two defenses in the country. They're both good folks real real good and they could meet in January right down the road in New Orleans. That's right. That's where the BCS championship game is and USC sitting one there's penalty flag comes flying now. USC one and LSU two and if they run the table they'll be there. That'd be great. You, you really just can't understand how tough this is on Sean Glennon. There's so much there's so much confusion for the offensive line. The different blitz looks. There's just no time to execute. It, you literally have a second and a half before you've got to get rid of the football. Or you're going to get sacked. That's big Sergio Render, the big Tigers guard. Decline. He was looking for somebody to hit. Hey. Eligible receiver. <laughs> he wanted to get out to the right. He got out a little bit quick and trying to set up that screen. The defense from LSU just way too fast. You just, again, can't say it enough. It's tough to execute when you don't have any time. Ten first downs for the Tigers, two for the Hokies. Who set his back deep, about him to punt it again. Set once a fair catch at the 10 yard line. And that's where Matt Flynn and the Tigers will go back to work again. 9 34, first half, 24 nothing, SEC. When you put the helmet on and you throw it on the side, your time is about to come. Tyrod Taylor and over there, Coach Mike O'Kane was talking to him and meanwhile the starter 
Sean Glennon has taken off his headgear right now LSU with the football nine and a half to go here in the first half Flynn back in that pocket middle incomplete it'll be second and ten. When Matt Flynn you see Matt my bad my bad you know why he said my bad he had early to set one of the best receivers in the country one on one against Macho Harris off to his right. And Doucette went to the post and he was all by himself and it looked like Macho Harris was coming off the field might have had a little bit of an injury because Doucette separated from him quickly that could have been a, a 90 yard touchdown pass. Kirk 26 plays LSU average better than 10 yards a play and the defense is holding the Hokies to 1.6. Here comes Williams. Straight up the middle to the. 19 yard line short of the first down but it puts it in makeable territory to either run or pass. I love Jacob Hester. I, I, I think he's going to be a, you know he's going to be a very valuable commodity. He's one of the leaders of this team. But for LSU to be able to make it through the toughest conference in the country. Keelan Williams has to become a factor. He's got to become their go to guy and you sprinkle in Hester and all those different positions. But Keelan Williams is a difference maker in that backfield. Flynn gets time. First down, Brandon LaFell. Well, we've seen Matt Flynn have a lot of success in his first half by throwing the quick slants. Might seem like a simple throw, but because the linebacker at DB is clearing out so quickly, it gives Matt Flynn a nice window to be able to put it right in there to LaFell and give him time to get down and get protected. And Cam Chancellor, the new safety, number 17 for Virginia Tech, not reacting quickly enough, and it makes it easy throw for Matt Flynn. Flynn again, high, incomplete, do set. And let's check in with Reese. All right, Brandon, it's time now for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. And Alex Rodriguez has done it again. Went yard twice, numbers 50 and 51 as the Yankees beat up on the Royals 11 to 5. Rodriguez, 48 of those home runs coming as a third baseman, ties the major league record. Roger Federer advancing to the U.S. Open final. He'll face Novak Djokovic there. Federer trying to win fourth straight U.S. Open. Sports Center after the game. Stay current with ESPN News. Back into that pistol look again. Here's the option. Flynn keeps it. And he takes a whack that time, and that was Hall. Vince Hall. DB and Williams a little pushing and shoving down there. Well, that time, you're right. Vince Hall got around Sean Jordan, the fullback who went in motion, kind of the H back, right in the middle of the screen. He gets around him, and boom, lowers it on Matt Flynn. That was the exact same play that went for the big touchdown the opposite way into the right boundary where he cut it back for the big touchdown. That time Virginia one, Tech ready for it. Yes. One one big difference. <laughs> Vince Hall. The carrier. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. You're right about that. Here's Flynn now. Snaps it off complete to Williams into the middle of that defense and a DB runs him down from behind and uh, this will force an LSU punt. Here comes the punting team onto the field. And so we should be, unless there's a change of heart on that far sideline, just a few seconds away from from seeing that youngster Tyrod Taylor see what he can do against this defense. And here's the unusual punt formation by LSU. It drives their fans crazy. Yeah, they think it's a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> I gotta tell you, they're just not comfortable with this baby. Look at the separation. And you know what Beamer Ball wants to do here. Get after it. And what a punt. He punted past the coverage. Oh, he's good. Oh, what a leg. Out at the 10 yard line. That's a 56 yarder. And, uh, folks, it's time now just to take a little break away from the action for the Aflac trivia question. Who is considered the godfather of LSU football? I'll give you one hint, folks. Think politician. There is a flag down. Holding on LSU. Billy Hyde for the Holding number 18 during the kick. The penalty 10 yards from the previous spot. We play fourth down. Jacob Hester on the hold, but I just love that Jacob Hester is the true Iron Man in college football. 
He lines up at fullback. He lines up at tailback. He wants to cover punts. He wants to try to block a punt. You know that shot of less. Yeah. Reminded you a little bit of Bo, didn't yeah. it? Oh yeah. Huh? <laughs> when I talk with Les, I feel like I'm talking to Bo. <laughs> Same mannerisms. We were needling him last week. He said some unkind things about the Pac-10. <laughs> First so thing we he said when he, came in. when he came in, man. Well, I was hiding after Oregon State lost that game to Cincinnati. I didn't want to see what Les, but but his wife Katie had a luncheon the other day. She. She brought him a cap and she got on him. The cap said Pac-10 rules. <laughs> <laughs> Pac-10 did OK today. Yeah, Tough Thursday did. night but Washington. Yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah. Patrick Fisher back now. Close it in and he nails another one. Drives Royal back inside the 20. Fumbled it. Fumble the football out of bounds though. It will be Virginia Tech football. Ooh -hoo. Lucky break. Well Sean Glenn is going to sit out and let the true freshman come out and the reason he's done is not just because of his failures but it's because of the LSU defense has confused the Virginia Tech offensive line. They can't get anything established. There's a timeout after a timeout. Frank Beamer is frustrated every time Glennon has dropped back to throw. The pressure has been all over him. Let's see what Taylor can do. Here is the youngster. They line him up in the power eye. He's going to throw. And he had one hopper incomplete. And let's check in with more on the young man with Lisa. Lisa? Well, Brent, every Virginia Tech player that I talked to this week in Blacksburg, when I asked them about Tyrod Taylor, they all said the same thing that he is the real deal. And I asked him, I said, you know, I won't use your name, just privately. Would you like to see him get a shot? And none of them would say that, but they would just smile and say he is ready to take over if Coach wants him to. They say the thing that impresses them about him is that he acts like he's been in the program for three or four years already. From right? Hampton, Virginia, handing off this time, Lisa, to the 16-yard line. Now he faces his first long third down. You and I have been watching this game for a long time. Let me, let me try to explain to you right now what Tyrod Taylor is facing in this stadium you cannot underestimate the mind and the way it's working and how the nerves that he's trying to deal with and cope with I know he has talent I know he's going to have a great career right now LSU's defense could be in jock straps and he wouldn't know the difference because he's not even <laughs> he, he can't see him he's just his his head right now <laughs> that would be a sight now. It is, it's spinning it around if he can execute more power to him but this is a tough deal for a true freshman shotgun sprinting over to the right looking downfield snaps it off complete and out of bounds Josh Morgan and a penalty flag comes flying on this play and Taylor came After in the player, seven. Was out of bounds personal foul number 27 defense 15 yards automatic first down Curtis Taylor yep. keeps it alive he is the free safety. Coach won't like this. No, it's the first mistake that we've seen LSU make the entire first half, and it's a good call. He's out of bounds, 27 and white. Taylor comes through. You can really see it right here. Out of bounds, boom. 15 yards. First break to Virginia Tech's caught. On his first series, yep. he gets a first down. There you go. Okay. Good for him. Any way you can get it. So the young man from Hampton steps back up under center and you can just imagine the butterflies play fake going to go downfield and broken up Whitaker was over there and Taylor so Curtis Taylor number 27 coming right back with Chevis Jackson well you, again we know that he has talent we know he's going to have a great career. But when you have to throw the football you've got to be able to get rid of it and and with the air that he put on that football it allowed Jackson not only to come over but also the safety Taylor and the Hokies very fortunate that ball was not intercepted by LSU's defense. Second down and long for the freshman. Back in the shotgun. And before the snap play was whistled down. Ball 
ball start. Number 51 offense. Five yards. Still second down. That's Matt Welsh, backup guard. He's on the field. And this offensive line facing tough, tough test for Coach Beamer. They take a, a step forward and a couple back. It's been that kind of night for Virginia Tech. Got to get it downfield now. On second down. He's got that one on one goes far side incomplete Royal the intended target and Jackson. The defensive back had his one on one coverage right there and Jackson did a good job. He had one on one coverage and he actually had more than a second and a half to be able to try to throw the football. I mean he, he got back there. He's got one on one and by the way Eddie Royal has outstanding speed and if you're a Virginia Tech Hokie you'll take that matchup you know even though Chavis Jackson's one of the top corners in the SEC you'll take that matchup one on one providing your quarterback has time to throw third and 15 and Tech is 0 for 6 on third down here. Here comes the blitz from Bo Pelini. Where is it going to come from. Throws into the middle well short of the first down so Virginia Tech is forced to punt as Ali Highsmith and Tyson Jackson doing the job defensively. I can't wait to watch LSU throughout this year and to find out if there's an offense out there that can execute on third down and try to get a first down. They put they apply the pressure and yet they're disciplined. They get back and they get into coverage. It's not an undisciplined team that's just pinning their ears back. There's a reason for everything that they're doing. It's a well schooled defense. That was nice to see wasn't it. Shot of Glennon back there. Talking to the freshman. Yep. You set another fair catch sure handed right about the 30 yard line. Will Affleck the Godfather another nickname the you King got, you got me here. Oh I'm telling you you got to go back to the 30s you got to go back to history <laughs> and here he is folks. He was one of the truly great characters of the state of Louisiana. Oh, Huey yeah. Long, known by many as the Kingfish, and he was that. There he is, strutting out. He used to come out here, and he grabbed the baton and he'd march down in front of the band, in front of everybody. I mean, he was he was a classic. Now, and back in 1934, they couldn't sell tickets to an LSU game because the circus was coming to town. He called them and said he had an animal dipping law. And he was going to dip those tigers and elephants and the circus moved on and they had a big crowd for LSU. <laughs> Another time why the railroad he said I'm going to raise your taxes on the bridges in Louisiana unless you give those LSU students a reduced rate ticket to go up to Nashville and watch that Vanderbilt game. Six dollars round trip to radio. Wow. And the railroad said they don't want to pay that. Tax. <laughs> right. The Huey Long stories you could go on and on all night about the Kingfish. The Godfather. And he loved the football down here. But what he liked most of all was to come in and just strut in front of everybody. That was before Quite a character. Oh, yeah. he, was, he, was, he was a legend man. Blaze Star now. That was that was one of his girlfriends. Now she could do it with a feather in a bow. All right, here we go now. Playing <laughs> hands off, and this will make it third and makeable for him with that young Hester. Now he's done a pretty good job here. Well, he has. He's been all over the field. I, I just can't get over the way that LSU. We, we knew about the LSU defense, but the LSU offense. And there's Glenn Dorsey heading to the showers a little bit early here. <laughs> but I, I can't get over the way this LSU offense. First down, Doucette. Paul rides him down, helping out on that side, along with Jason Worlds. Ooh, big fella shaking up a little bit, huh? Yeah. But they 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 have just dominated a very good Virginia Tech defense. You're sitting at home saying, "Ah, oh, Virginia Tech, ah, eh, they're overrated. They're not that good." Maybe their offense is. This is a great defense. And let's check in with Reese. All right, Brent, coming up in the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Rough day for Michigan, another historic day and a bad end of history that the Wolverines would rather not be on. We'll also check in on some SEC winners, including a slugfest between the hedges in Athens. And the Big 12 had some tests, some of which they passed with flying colors, Texas and OU soaring to the top of that conference. But you got you to tell Coach Holtz that the good news is that next week, Either Notre Dame or Michigan has got a win. Right? Got a win. <laughs> Second down and ten now. Here's Flynn. Complete. 
Here's LaFell again, and he has been a busy target here tonight. First and ten, plenty of time left, up by 24, Kirk. The exciting thing to watch this offense grow, and they are growing with a new quarterback, and early Doucette is their primary target. But to see Brandon LaFell getting more and more involved in this offense, to see Keelan Williams getting more and more involved to go along with Jacob Hester in the backfield and Charles Scott, I mean, you're starting to see the versatility in some of the other playmakers from this LSU offense after losing those three first round draft choices last year. There's the swing outside receiver tripped after the uh, reception. I really like Matt Flynn. I, I mean I, I think Matt Flynn is not only physically gifted his ability to be a combination guy running and throwing he, he just has a certain presence about himself that he even though he's a first year starter. I believe that when he is out there his players look in his eyes in the huddle and they believe that he can lead them on crucial drives and lead them to big victories. And I think it's because of the respect they have for him and the way he handled himself as a backup to Jamarcus Russell. Second down and long. Williams is right off to the right of Flynn. Offensive line gives him plenty of time. They swing to the speedster. And he is brought down at the 39 yard line by Brandon Flowers, the junior from Delray Beach, Florida. Down West Palm way down there. He's a good one. He'll be playing Sunday ball. I imagine we got a few of those Sunday fellows watching us here tonight. Yeah. They're seeing a few of these guys. Well, see. Be up there with them. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few. Just he, give, give, give some of these fellows time here. They'll be up there. They're coming. They're going to take some jobs, boys. I'm sorry <laughs> to tell you that. <laughs> this is the way it is at the professional level. Third down now. In trouble. Sacked for the first time at the 40 yard line. And that was Chris Ellis, the senior from Hampton, Virginia. Ellis finally gets in and puts the pressure and Bud Foster decides that he wants to try to just bring three and by bringing three he's going to drop eight and try to hope that the coverage can create enough confusion for Matt Flynn and occupy all the receivers and it gave Chris Ellis enough time to get around the offensive line and Carnell Stewart and come up with a big sack. Interested to see what senior Patrick Fisher can do here if he can drop one down inside the 20 again. Obviously he can kick it all the way to the uh, end zone with this leg and uh, he's pointing out where some of that pressure might be coming from. Beamer ball looking for another. Rifles this one on into the end zone and come out on the 20 yard line. So we talked about Sunday football and again let's go back Monday night Ravens and the Bengals remember now it's seven Eastern good starting time for you folks in the East let's start something get them all to start there there's the second well they'll love me for that Cardinals will be taking on the 49 now we got Matt Leonard in that one and we got yeah. Alex Smith for the Niners what do you think couple good young quarterbacks I like the double header uh, then again I'm a Cincinnati Bengals fan ah I'm sure of course I'm a Bengals course. fan and what a way to start on Monday night against a great Baltimore Ravens team with one of the best defenses they've in the been NFL. behaving themselves that bunch they're ready to play we're trying football. we're trying come on <laughs> let's see what happens and or being strung out by this defense and the uh, clock continues to run. There's your final seconds now and we're going to be hearing from the boys in the studio. It's a tough half now for Frank Beamer. He doesn't experience halves like this very very often. No, and now he's got a true freshman out there with Nixon. You wonder what's going to happen in the second half but you add all that up 40 yards of total offense to 327 yards of total offense for LSU. Yeah, scratching your head. Now it's, there's nights like this. And ball, and uh, he's gone through a couple quarterbacks here now, working with the freshman. And meanwhile, on the other side, there's LSU. Let's go down to Lisa with Coach Beamer. Thanks, Brent. Coach, you went to your freshman, Tyrod Taylor. What ultimately made you decide to go to him? Well, we just need to try to get something to go going, and uh, you know he can move around a little bit for us, and uh, you know we'll. Uh, See if we can get some going here in the second half. We need to get ourselves back in a rhythm here and as a football team and uh, see if we can get something going here. But ultimately that defense has got to give him some time. What adjustments do you make to, to get him some more time back there to do what he has to do. Well we got some plays here for him and got a package so uh, we just need to come out and hit our passes and uh, block some people up front. So we should expect to see more of Taylor in the second half. Absolutely. All right. Thank you coach. 
Lisa thank you and right now we're going to send it to Reese with Coach Holtz and Mark May the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Let me tell you something the last 14 years I don't think I've ever seen a half as dominated against Virginia Tech as what we just witnessed. This is a very proud program at Virginia Tech and they are right now getting embarrassed on national TV by arguably the best team in the country. And again. Those rascals on the West Coast oh, that we will see in Lincoln can, now. Can you imagine? They just you heard you now. No, no, I said I, arguably. Arguably. There you go. I'm just, <laughs> it, let's just say for fun. Can you imagine if I got to keep in line, folks. If LSU We got to see going, them Trojans. I, I'm with you. You're preaching to the choir. I love SC. I got SC Oklahoma in the national title. I love SC. Now, Oklahoma's a factor now. Oh, well, they look good. Here's Royal back at a five yard line trying to give the freshman quarterback some field position. Hard return out to the 22. So if you weren't with us, the freshman from Hampton, Virginia, took over for Sean Glennon and Tyrod Taylor. We'll see what he can do. Now, one thing to keep in mind about him, which we haven't seen, he is out of the Michael Vick mold. In other words, he can create with his feet. He can do that. And speaking of Michael, Kirk, remind me, conversation went down between Michael and Frank Beamer for the first time the other day. Telephone call and I want to talk about it and uh, okay. send along our best for for that young man to start his way back here. And there's the handoff to Orr as he comes around. Since I'm talking about, it, let me let me get into it because there's there's a part of the story I think people are really going to appreciate. I, I said Frank how did he sound? He said you know Brent he re he really sounded very sincere about his apology. He felt terrible what he gotten involved in. He's willing to go away, serve his time. He's going to take a mail correspondence course and get his degree. From Virginia Tech. And I think we can all applaud that. That's crazy. We should all wish Michael Vick the best. I know he's watching, and young man, we'll give you a second chance. You stood up, said you were wrong, and we hope you come on back. And uh, here comes here comes Orr now out to the out to the 22 yard line. And there's Derry Beckwith, very good middle line. Here's a guy that's probably the unsung hero of this defense. So much attention is paid to Glenn Dorsey and Tyson Jackson and Ali Highsmith. The people forget about Derry Beckwith and Bo Pelini will tell you real fast when you start to talk about his defense that number 48 the junior the inside linebacker is as good a linebacker as he's ever been around at this level. He's got a tremendous future and he's the glue to the defense even though everybody wants to talk about every everybody else. Derry Beckwith is a tremendous football player and that time he showed some great acceleration. Taylor. Down the sideline, jump ball incomplete. And Tech is forced to punt again. That was Zenon matched against Josh Morgan. And we've seen Zenon and we've seen Chevis Jackson for three years now. And it's just when you have experienced corners and guys who can give you this kind of coverage, it allows you to put a lot of pressure on a quarterback. Again, third down and long against LSU's defense. If you're a quarterback watching tonight's game and you've got LSU on your schedule, you might want to talk to your offensive line on about third down because you are going to get hit every single time your offense is in third down against this LSU defense. And set and Bowden did not get off a good one. And Doucet made a late decision to uh, to catch that and not give up yardage. And raising that arm for a fair catch and uh, reminder now that with uh, ESPN. Uh, Covering NFL seven days a week, you get your weekly dose of NFL news and analysis as uh, Chris Berman hosts ESPN's Emmy winning two hour pregame show. That's Sunday now, tomorrow, NFL Countdown presented by IBM, and that is at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So, the brand new season. It's nice to see yeah. the NFL regular season getting started. Absolutely. Enough, enough of the preseason. Yeah, yeah. I have to agree with that. Now on first down, Flynn steps up, incomplete. It'll be second down and ten. And uh, Brandon LaFell has been a preferred target here tonight. See, I, I talked with uh, with Les Miles and Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator, about him, and I said, you know, I know you're looking for that second or third receiver to help you out after you lost Craig Davis, to Dwayne Bow, and who's that guy going to be? And the, one of the first guys, of course, they bring up outside of, du of early Doucette is Brandon LaFell, and I said, you know, he's a he's a big guy, six three, about 205 pounds. Does he have the ability to separate from man coverage? And they said, their eyebrows raised. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But separating is not a problem, even with his size. It's not just a big physical receiver. Here's Hester on that inside handoff. And he 
slices through to about the 48 yard line. It'll be marked there. 24 nothing. You're on the road. I got to go back to Virginia Tech to, to have any chance to just try to gain some confidence. It, I think it's going to start on this side of the ball. You've got a true freshman trying to continue to move 80 yards down the field. It's not realistic. If you have 40 yards of total offense. The only way Virginia Tech can get anything going is for the Hokie defense to try to create a little havoc of their own and try to come up with a turnover. That's traditionally a strength of the Hokie defense. On third down, Flynn has good time, goes downfield, and there he is again hanging on. Brandon LaFell took a hit from Cam Chancellor, but he held on to the football, and it's first and ten Tigers. That, that gives you an idea of how physical Brandon LaFell can be. We've seen him run away from defenders tonight. We've seen him sit right in the pocket, slow down, and take a huge hit from Chancellor. What I love is he slowed his body down knowing that the safety was closing in on him, and it allowed Matt Flynn to put the football right where it had to be in zone coverage. Hester, there's the tailback. He's off to Flynn's right. There is Hester. He has been a tough, tough runner inside. You know who his musical hero is? No, who's that? <laughs> the King. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Elvis Presley. Yeah. Now, you know, he heard he heard those California youngsters singing last last week on the, Saturday the night. Cal so now we, we can do that. So so we'll hear from that young a little bit That's later. That's becoming an, a little tradition. <laughs> That's a challenge Saturday now. Yeah. yeah. Another thing about Hester, and uh, he was married this July. So, uh, let's, uh, before we look at that, let's uh, see if he picked up the. Looks like the nose of that football is real close, doesn't it? Down there, let's see. Okay. No. No. Here's Jacob Hester. Very lovely Katie. And there's Matt Flynn, his best man, the quarterback. So good buddies, and uh, they do a little singing together. You'll see, you'll see Matt in that video. Shreveport, Louisiana. Vangel Christian High School. Yeah. Great high school football program. He and, he and John, John David, David Booty are good yep. friends. Yep. They wouldn't talk that, a lot. John that they were teammates. There. Exciting if they keep winning. Wouldn't that be something? That'd be some show. Up. Now, yeah. huh? There's play fake from Flynn comes back left side and incomplete and again he was looking for big number one six foot three inch 205 sophomore Brandon LaFell from Houston Texas. He's caught six balls tonight for 125 yards. He's really growing up right before our eyes tonight. He, he made some big plays last year in the bowl game. I think people were excited knowing about his prospects this year. Didn't didn't he wasn't heavily involved in the Mississippi State game but I think you can tell. Is when the chips are on the table, Brandon LaFell and Early Doucette are the go to targets this year for the Tiger offense. They'll run Scott for the first down, move the chains. Fresh set of downs now for LSU. I think when Jum uh, Jimbo Fisher left for Florida State, a lot of people thought, how how crazy is this offense going to be with a new coordinator but it's very similar there's a new little wrinkle that you're going to see more and more I think this year is when they get close to the red zone Ryan Perilou the quarterback has his own little package and it's it's an ability to not just run the football he can throw off of it but you're going to see more option attack when 11 gets a chance to get back there in that shotgun There is following Scott Scott with a nice block for him and he's to the 15 yard lines. He picks up two or three. DB makes the stop 11 on 11. The more reps and the more experience that Paralu is able to get in games like this the further down that schedule again talking about how demanding and how tough it is in this SEC. It's going to only help them come up with just a few new wrinkles, just enough to try to change things up for defenses to try to deal with. And it's, it's, going, it's becoming pretty apparent when they get inside that red zone, that's when they like to go to him with his package. Remember, Florida rode that all the way to a national championship with Tim Tebow coming off the bench. And here comes Perilou. 
close to the 10 needs to get to the 8 for the first down. So now third down coming up DJ Parker on the stop for the Hokies. And they're going to send Flynn back in for this third down. So Carolou comes out. It's a very versatile offense. He's a big rascal now. Yeah. 11 yard line. Scott is the running back to Flynn's left. Need to cross the eight for a first down. Flynn will go for it. Slides. I think he was slid a little short of it. He's going to be marked at the 10 yard line. And uh, this is going to be a fourth down. I wonder if he stumbled a bit. Now it's 24 and less is saying, what? Let's go for it. There's no, no need not to. I think you can read his lips over there on the sideline. What do you think? Well, he, he stumbled there because he saw John Graves, a big. Defensive lineman closing in on him. He also got a phone call from up above. <laughs> you know, somebody up there said, "Now, Lefts, want you to know this is fourth and two. This is not fourth and one. Here. This is not a gimme." Now, so, well, so now let's call a timeout. Let's huddle up over here. So, uh, so now the board of directors is going to have a conversation about this. And uh, LSU. I think the time. Because he thought they were going to go for it, some precious seconds had run down on that clock. So Les saw it coming down, and he said, "We better call a timeout right now because if we are going to kick this, there's no need to give up five yards." You know, as good as this football team is, they are a relaxed bunch. Yes, they are. Yeah, they are. It's good practice the other day. Yeah. Watching them. Loose, I'll tell you, when confident. they go one on one, folks, that's big time now. <laughs> and uh, we've got the Dell X Factor. So here it is night games at Tiger Stadium. 76 season, they played night games. Since 1960 now, they've won 77% of the time. If you round that off. And in the day, only 47 percent. So big difference in Louisiana Saturday night. And Colt David will attempt to tack on the three. Matt Flynn's the hole. 28 yard is good. Yeah. So we talked about Hester and Flynn. Williams joined him. And we'll hear from Jacob Hester, a little good lip sync. We gotta give a slight edge to the Bears. Just oh, slight. Not slight. No. slight. <laughs> You're only going slight. <laughs> Nebraska better raise the bar next yeah, they gotta week. Get raise up, huh? the bar. And they, a little more. Gotta get a little bit more action going. One eight. Said, Come listen, on. I can do the blue suede shoes too if you want. It. <laughs> Here we go now. He's a versatile player. We gotta get him dancing a little better. Yeah. Yeah. So we and, uh, and here's Royal. Stretching out, and he'll be out of bounds. Well, now Lisa, a week ago, she found Tightwad Hill up there in Berkeley, and uh, she's found out that not everybody is inside the stadium. This is a live shot out at the RV park out there, Lisa. Well, Brett, you know the view is certainly not as good as it was on Tightwad Hill. In fact, there is no view at all except on the television screen. But this is how they do it down here in the Bayou. Folks just come here. Sometimes 15,000 people in the parking lot outside of the stadium, and they put their satellite dishes up. They got their flat screen televisions, and they watch the game from here. They have absolutely no intention of, at all of going inside the stadium. They don't have tickets, but obviously they feel that uh, it's more fun to watch the game here than at home on their sofa. I'm not so sure because it's a little bit hot, Brett. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good, Lisa! Hey, hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. I don't see the purple haze out there. Did you no, have no haze, but huh? there is plenty, and I mean plenty, of beer going around. <laughs> All right, baby. Ice one down for me. I'll get out there later. First down and 10 coming up here. 
Yeah, you never know where she's going to show up, huh? <laughs> she looked pretty relaxed there. So yeah, she's going to hang out Tiger a little bit, huh? She's right about to be in hot now. It's, it has uh, been. Boy, it was muggy out there. It's been a hot 48 <laughs> hours for uh, yours really truly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, we've got a uh, play that was good. And, uh, Kirsten's back up. Kirsten Pittman. And, and, and what we'll do, let's check in with Reese right now. Reese. All right, Brent, Hawaii and Louisiana Tech. We told you at halftime they were headed to overtime. Hawaii scored, and Derek Dooley of Louisiana Tech said, let's try to win it now and go for two. And look at Gerard Lewis of the Warriors saving Hawaii's shot at an undefeated season, and they win it 45-44. On ESPN2, Auburn and South Florida slugging it out. Tigers with a three-point lead in that one. All right, Reese, keep us up to date on that one. And Auburn has its hands full with the South Florida of, of the Big East. And here's that freshman taking off and showing you what he can do. Tyrod Taylor puts it down and takes off. And there is the excitement that the coaches have been waiting for. Well, the gamble by LSU, they've had a lot of success. Man under coverage. The linebackers clear out with the backs and the tight end. The corners are occupied with the wide receivers. And with a, a quarterback that runs a 4-3-9, once he gets away from the, the initial surge of the defensive line, there's nothing but room for him to run and pick up a big game. First foray into LSU territory. Did not cross the 50 in the first half. The freshman off a of fake is going to, there's that shovel pass to Orr. Daylight, 30, 25 to the 20 yard line. And here's a little excitement now for the Hokies to build on. The youngster looked good setting that play. He looked like Lee Gross Cup that time. Well, not only that, you're, you're, let's remember he's a true freshman on the road at Tiger Stadium. He showed great patience and great poise, looked off Orr, got the linebackers cleared out, dumped it underneath, and it gave Sam. Time to get to the linebacker to spring Brandon or loose. Big Glenn Dorsey back on that defensive line. Remember he left early at the end of the first half. Here comes the end around Royal looking for daylight. This is going to be a loss. Dives to the 24 yard line and he was cut off brilliantly by Luke Sanders. The strong side linebacker the senior from West Monroe Louisiana. He did not give ground. Well, they're trying to take advantage of speed and athletic ability, sometimes over pursuing. But look at the discipline of LSU's defense. Not only Luke Sanders waiting there, but Pittman's back in. Both of them saying, no, we're not going to be fooled. We're not undisciplined. We're going to stay home. Our job is to stay home and be ready for a bootleg or a reverse. Perfect position again by the Tiger defense. Second and 14. Remember, nobody has scored yet on LSU. They pitched a shutout against Mississippi State in their opener. The freshman threatening inside draw. Here comes Orr. 15 to the 14. A little bit short of that first down, though. Going to need about three yards coming up here on third down. Stelt steps up from that safety spot and makes the hit. Brent, it's the first time we've seen Brandon Orr have an opportunity to show what he's capable of doing. In the last couple plays, he's not only had a chance to get out in the open field, he's had to make people miss and show that he's a physical runner. That time he went right by Ali Highsmith and picked up some yardage. Taylor and the offense need to reach the 10 for a first down. He's gonna try to throw for it. Take off, got it, first down. Out of bounds across the five yard line to the three and there's a penalty flag thrown over there. That'll be a personal foul it looks like. Is that Curtis Taylor again over there? After the play, personal foul, 35 defense. Nope. The penalty be half that's, the that's Luke, the Luke Sanders the linebacker at foul. Brent, it's a very similar play that we saw earlier with a quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, is looking at the man coverage here from the linebackers. When you get linebackers and man coverage and you're a quarterback that can move, look at the, look at the opening in the middle of that defense. A good, good recognition by Taylor for a first down. Greg Boone comes in as an added blocker. He'll line up a left tight end. Give themselves a full house look. Straight ahead, close to the goal line. No signal. So it'll be second down and goal. And 
Weatherford. Well, he's Frank's fullback now. You'd be very tempted to have Tyrod go right straight ahead. Say, everybody's thinking about they're going to try to be Virginia Tech. The, the tradition of Virginia Tech is to show, hey, we've got the lunch pail mentality. We're going to out tough you in the trenches. I don't mind a little bootleg here on naked. Fake that power and walk around the corner. Straight ahead. Still no signal now. LSU saying he didn't make it. What a stout front that is. See that the, that call would be a lot easier to make for a naked or a bootleg on first or second down. Now you get the third down, and the defense starts to look for that. Boy, his body looks like it gets across, but the football does not. It's a good call by the officials to set up third down. Charles Alexander was in the middle of that goal line defense. Big 91, and the umpire is going to stop it here before the snap. Umpire stepped right in. So they're taking a look at it, and uh, did you think he crossed well, the, the plane? The angle that we had, it looked like his body did. I just want to see where the football is. Oh, look at this angle. This is. Well, that looked like he got across it on the right side, but you know what you don't see on that angle is the football. Yeah, I, I, I'm just That's trying to see. It's all about the placement of the football and trying to break the plane. And when you can't find a great video to show you the difference, they obviously they go back to it. So you can uh, see his body. His body is across, but if the football didn't get across, and with the video so far that we've seen, indisputable. Remember that. That's the that's word. That's the, the buzzword, word, right? Indisputable. They can't see something that really defines it. I'd be shocked if they overturn this and call it a touchdown. You did, they're just. You don't have enough video evidence here to overturn it. This time we've had the game stopped, and of course, Taylor looking for his first touchdown, and they're still running it back and forth. But I've been really, really impressed with Tyrod Taylor and the set of circumstances that he's had to deal with. He has shown tremendous poise, and you can see why the Virginia Tech Hokie Nation is so excited about what he has to offer to this offense, not only this year, but what a heck of a career he has ahead. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. As soon as he says reverse, baby, that's a TD. Huh? They must have gone with the body. With the replays that we saw, you couldn't see the football, but maybe they assumed with the body getting across, that was good enough for them to think touchdown. Bottom line is the Hokies are on the board. The first touchdown, the first points of the year. Remember, Miles and the Tigers pitched a shutout in Starkville. And here comes Judd Dunleavy. Throckmorton is the holder. Still 438 to go here in the third. And freshman quarterback Tyrod Taylor brings him down with his feet. Takes it across for the first touchdown for the Hokie Nation. 27-7. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Jeep. With seven Jeep vehicles, there's one for you. And ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. ESPN Game Plan lives here. That may be my favorite mascot in the entire world. And this is the new one. This is the new puppy. Mike, fifth, he passed on. And he got his name officially, Mike Six. They think he's a little young to bring him inside the stadium for a game, folks. But we got some good tales to tell you about about Mike the Tiger and what they used to do to visiting teams. One involves your Buckeyes. Oh yeah, you know? right over there, right over there. They parked the cage over there, and Chris Spielman's getting ready for a showdown of the '80s. Last time, two top ten non-conference teams met in here, and that big old Tiger was roaring out there, and Chris had just scared the devil out of him. <laughs> he didn't know they had a Tiger. That's and then you'd have to run past that Tiger oh, when you man. came out on the field, man. Mike oh, Six yeah. is going to be. They say he's going to grow to 700 pounds. Oh, that's a beauty, man. Wow. Huh? Here we come. Here's Doucette. Yeah, he's ridden out the 25. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. 
All right, Brent, time now for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Alex Rodriguez went yard twice. He now has 51. The Yankees beat up on the Royals 11 to 5. Rodriguez driven in 138. Roger Federer going to the U.S. Open final. He's seeking his fourth straight U.S. Open, and Justine Enna wins her second title. Much more on those stories on Sports Center. When you guys are done, you can stay current with ESPN News. All right, Reese, and uh, now we'll see if the Tigers can respond after the Hokies put that touchdown on them. Flint is back in the shotgun. And here's a handoff to his buddy. Helmet goes flying. So there goes Jacob Hester and uh, some of these great views down here. This is the original Death Valley, folks, being provided by the Outback Steakhouse Airship, the Bloomin' Onion One. Captain Tom Witten is at the controls of the Bloomin' Onion. Boy, that would have been something to have Billy Cannon's famous punt return covered by the Bloomin' Onion. Now, that, would, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was Mississippi on that Halloween night. Now that was that was some scene down here. Here comes Flynn. This is Doucette. Slips a tackle out to the 36 yard line. Got himself a first down. Not had a chance to talk much about early Doucette tonight. I think we thought coming in he would be a big part of this offense, but Virginia Tech has done a good job of trying to take him away, and it's opened up the opportunity for LaFell to make plays. But early Doucette is as probably as gifted a wide receiver with that combination of great quickness and incredible strength to be able to pull away from defenders. He's got a great future in the NFL. The H back look they'll run behind him with Hester and uh, well he makes the most out of a run doesn't he kind of backs his way in picks up a couple of yards after he stopped at the point of attack he's a, he's a good looking run he, he'll surprise you now he can oh, yeah. play tailback play fullback he can do some things good blocker they say fine all around back well he's very versatile and I think one of the things that LSU is trying to show is that they have more than just early do set in week one he was a big part of that and Tonight we've seen Hester show that versatility and be a, a big part of it. The set is slotted. Look back in that direction. They've got him. And nothing doing as the All-American corner Brandon Flowers <laughs> makes the stop. Last week early Doucet made a lot of big plays. He had nine catches. The other rest of the receivers weren't really involved, and tonight they have been involved, as we just talked about. But one of the things about this game, you could look at it, you could say, you know, it's 27 to 7, almost done with the third quarter. But it's the second game of the season, and LSU wants to continue to build momentum, and Virginia Tech's trying to say, guys, we're not going to give up. Let's keep fighting, and let's try to get the ball back to our offense. And they can do it right here. This is third and nine if they can stop Flynn. Flynn looking downfield. Got him. Do set. First down. At the 34 yard line on third down, he throws a perfect strike to number nine. Two things that stood out to me going back to Jacob Hester with a good job of picking up the blitz on Xavier Deeby, but then the confusion in the secondary by Virginia Tech. The young true freshman Terrence Tolliver took most of the safeties. And it opened up for the throw, but there's Jacob Hester taking on Xavier Deeby, meets him right in the middle and gives Matt Flynn plenty of time to make the throw. Flynn has thrown for 214 yards parallel, checks back in. And fake the run, you're going to throw middle deep, wide open, touchdown to set. How about that? Parallel took a couple of steps over to the right, the Hokies bit. And early Doucette win end zone 34 yard touchdown. This is what happens when defenses start to assume that when Paralu comes in he's going to run the football. There's action this way but he comes back and Chancellor gets out of position because the scouting report says a run 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 whoops out of position. There's nobody left in the middle of the field. Great call by Gary Croton that time. Taking advantage of a young safety in Cam Chancellor, number 17. And Cole taps on another, another extra point. So Paralu's second touchdown pass. And it was a beauty. He's got big arm and a wide open receiver. 
This telecast available on ESPN HD presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. Well, time now for today's Good Hands flashback, and it is presented by Allstate. Folks, I'm going to take you back. 1959, Halloween night, LSU playing favored Mississippi. on his own 28. He gets a pass from center. He boots it and gets another nice kick away going way downfield. Billy Cannon watches it bounce. He takes it on his own 11. He comes back upfield at the 15. Stumbles momentarily. He's at the 20. Running hard at the 25. Gets away from one man for 30. Still runs the 25. I was a mere tyke. <laughs> they were down by three, fourth quarter. You were there, right? No, we heard it on radio oh, up north. Okay. WWL, I think. Oh, the okay. big sound out of New Orleans. You could hear it all over the oh, country. Man. It was unbelievable. What great footage. Isn't that great? That's huh? beautiful. HD would have been better. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. All right, man. Here we go. Well, again. Looking for a flush. He's out to the 24 now. Well, you know, Mr. Dorsey's been a heck of a force, and he'll be on, I would say, stays healthy, all the All American teams. Oh, yeah. Really? I mean, yeah, Brent, I mean, he is the premier defensive player in the country, and we've talked all night. He gets a lot of the attention, but it's not just Glenn Dorsey. Are the are those guys as powerful in the uh, in the EA games oh, yeah. as they are in real life? Oh yeah, huh? EA uh, you're a gamesman now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. A, you know, I'm I, a gamer. Hey, you're, the, you're the gamer guy. Okay. <laughs> and Orr is stuffed. Nothing doing. Derry Beckwith. And, and, and this oh, is yeah. this is this is NCA 2008 from yeah. EA Sports. And here, here's a look at what he can do if you try to leave him alone one on one. By the way, they, they gave him a big upper body here with the video here from EA. But now here he is defending the run. And the thing is, if you spend too much time thinking about boy, Glenn Dorsey, we've got to double team him. We've got to take him out of the game. Then it opens up the rest of his defense. In this case, it's Tyson Jackson who tries to get to the outside. Double team on Dorsey, and there's Jackson <laughs> making a play. Hey, and look at this. Oh. Tiger goes crazy. <laughs> Good stuff. Now here's Taylor, the freshman. Flushed right out of the pocket. Slides free. And intercepted at the 36 yard line. Curtis Taylor. Hold it, there's a penalty flag. Tyrod Taylor being uh, being helped up. He took a wallop. Ball was uh, ball was intercepted. That's a late hit. That might keep it going. Yeah. number seven, defense. Allen. Spot. First down. Now Les Miles doesn't think that's a good call. Nor does Ollie. Ollie Highsmith, cousin of Alonzo. Find fullback down out of Miami went to the NFL. It's not so much that it's late, it's just that he high. came high. Yeah. yeah. Anytime yeah. you come I, high, especially on quarterbacks, they're yeah. going to call that every single time. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid. Was it late? Know, I think it was a good call. Yeah, it wasn't late, yeah. it's just high. Yeah. You, get up, you get up near the face. You've got to protect the, those fellows. I mean, I, I think that's only fair. He's the one who's going to be playing on Sunday. High Smith, he's a senior now. First down and 10. Here's Orr. Take it down. It'll be second down long. Let me go back to Highsmith because uh, down in South Florida, he was a, an early committer to uh, to Miami. Signed the letter of intent, and then he was denied admission down there, and so he sat out 2003. Went to JC, and he called. He watched the LSU victory over Oklahoma in the championship game, and he called Jimbo Fisher. So you got a spot? Can I try out? And he came on up here. The rest is history. He was going to be a hurricane, though. Second down and long. And the quarter comes to an end before they get the snap up. Get the four up. There it is. Fourth quarter's coming up now. So it is 34 7, a very impressive first half by LSU. And they seem to be right at home right now. And I know Mike the Sixth, he's happy about it. Yeah. 
Back in Baton Rouge, and let's take a look at the ESPNU All-State standings. You will not find Notre Dame. You will not find Michigan, the number one team, USC Idol. We'll have in Lincoln, Nebraska, against the Cornhuskers next week. But you know, speaking about troubled Notre Dame and Michigan, both ride in a four-game losing streak, first time in history, and they will meet in Ann Arbor uh, next week. And Kirk, let me ask you about Jimmy Clausen, the freshman quarterback. What, what's your feeling no, about him? I, I, I had my doubts at how he would handle that situation, and the numbers weren't great. I was impressed with his attitude and his poise and the way he handled that adversity today in Happy Valley. Uh, here's another yep. uh, freshman quarterback, Young Taylor. And uh, he's got a great upside. Yeah, I, I think both of these true freshmen today that we've had a chance to see, Tyrod Taylor here tonight at Virginia Tech and, and Jimmy Clausen. And going back to Jimmy Clausen, I don't think fans understand how fast the game moves for a true freshman, how complex the schemes are, the way it's filtered down from the NFL, and how much goes on at the line of scrimmage. And to ask a true freshman to be able to register all that and then go out and execute is a tough thing to do. And, and Jimmy You're really impressed me today. You're an AP voter, right? Yeah. Are you going to jump LSU over no. USC? No. You'll keep them one, two. USC's one. one. And who's And three? here comes Oklahoma. Three? For me. Yeah, Oklahoma's yeah, closing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Kirk votes the Sooners up there. You know, that Oklahoma Texas game is going to be big. Now. Oh, my gosh. I mean, Texas. I can't wait huh? to see that. Yeah. That's the same week, by the way, Florida and LSU play each other right here. Is that right? That's a showdown weekend. Oof. Third down and one now. And stop short. There's that defense again. Well, there's Dorsey, number 72. And uh, just as good as the just as good as the EA game. Well, you can see he's a little bit more svelte here in real, yeah. real life. I, I couldn't believe what great shape Glenn Dorsey is. And the thing that Bo Pelini says se separates him is his motor. Usually big defensive linemen, interior guys, they'll take a play or two off. 72 for LSU. He never stops. The Tech thought about it, didn't they, on that fourth down? And uh, now they've sent Bowden out of the field to punt. And uh, Doucette got 14 minutes left, trailing 34 7 here. We got three up close, and uh, time runs out. Now. So there's the penalty flag. And let's see if they're going to back it up now. Play game. Offense. Five yards. Still fourth down. That'll bring it out to about what the 44 yard line for Beamer and uh, yeah Dorsey I know you had a chance to ask him a few questions we're going to take a look at that you know except for the quarterbacks who are emerging Dorsey, Dorsey would have a chance because of the position he plays to be the first player picked in the NFL draft I mean, you look for those defensive tackles like that you know, they're different makers on that Sunday ball. And uh, so well, here, here's Kirk now with uh, five questions for Mr. Dorsey. Who's on your iPod? Lil Wayne. What's your favorite food? Probably be some type of lasagna or something like that. What's your favorite class? Whew, probably psychology. The greatest thing about LSU? Fans, the environment, the whole community. You came back for your senior year for I just love being here and I love the opportunity to play for LSU and we're going to go for it all this year. Yes, indeed, they're going to go for it all this year. Right down the road in New Orleans, the national championship game. And they'd like to get there for the second time. Slanting through Keelan Williams, who scored one long touchdown here, picking up a first down. Bye. I'm, I'm going to look forward to seeing him and, and the leadership that he provides. A lot of times, Bryn, you know, when we travel around, you yep. see these great players. They get a little bit caught up in them, themselves and their own accolades and accomplishments, and that becomes a priority. With Glenn Dorsey and with this entire LSU team, it's about one goal, winning an SEC championship <clears throat> and ultimately getting to the national championship game in New Orleans. That's great to see from your leaders. When everybody has that goal, that's the same with USC. And uh, before the snap, there was a whistle. I heard the chant of overrated. Uh, Virginia Tech might not be the only team that hears Time that out. coming in here. LSU, second, charged, timeout. Tiger. So we'll take a break. LSU uses up its second timeout. 
They are well in control of this one. Reese Davis with you. Taco Bell studio update. Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn and Delbert Alvarado gets his field goal attempt blocked by St. Derek Marks of Auburn. Auburn's turned it over four times, but the Tiger defense has allowed no points off of those four turnovers. And on ESPN2, the Tigers lead by three. And here, these Tigers lead 34-7 over Virginia Tech. We have 13-15 to go in the fourth quarter. And a first and ten coming up for senior quarterback Matt Flynn. And here's the speedster in the backfield. Holiday number eight. Look out. Look in alley, baby. He'll go house. Whoa. This is a 10 2 man right here now. And he is something. That's a 22 yard burst for Trendon Holiday. Brent, you said 10 2. And I just want to let that sink in for everybody. 10 0 two and a hundred meters that's world class that's we'll see in the Olympics kind of speed gonna give it to him again he is to midfield picking up three more yards on that quick catch now you want to see how fast he is folks watch him get out on top now rolling there in the LSU purple coming right at you now I'll tell you how fast he is at 60 meters against Tyson Gay he had him and then he said to me, you know, Tyson's just too strong. He just rolled right past me <laughs> for the last 40. He said, but I'm going to I'm going to strengthen up a little bit and go after him. Olympic trial. So there there he is. He's got to be one of the two or three, if not the fastest man in college football right now. I mean, I didn't think there's any question. And, uh, he's hit out the 40 six yard line and let's see where Trend is from. There it is. Can you imagine high school oh, field trying this. to tackle him? Huh? He's 5'5, 160 pounds. But when you run a 10 0 2, oh. you just can't catch up to him. And he's got a little football player too. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's a football player. Yeah. I, I love that they, they're trying to find a little package for him to get him involved. And a lot of times it's lining up out of the backfield. They'll throw it to him. Just try to get him to the outside, get him the ball in space. Motion him out now. He's number eight. He'll be to the right side of this formation. Now Flynn still looking down, couldn't get him open. He's down at the uh, 45. He was slipping in uh, a DB. Comes up there. Crowd. The crowd is very aware of the job that has been done by this offense on number 11 and number nine. They are very aware that the two backers have not dominated them here tonight. No, and these are two got two linebackers that have been starters for four years for the Virginia Tech defense. I mean, think about the last five years where Virginia Tech has played. They've been to A&M at Kyle Field. They've been to Miami when the Orange Bowl sold out with a championship on the line. They went to West Virginia, the Sugar Bowl against Auburn last year against Georgia. Opened up with USC in 2004. They've never encountered anything like they've seen tonight as a, as a program. Close. There's a penalty flag. Did they rough bout? They would need a personal foul to get the... Uh, to get the first down. You they bet. Got they got it. That's it. And there was a signal. Roughing the kicker. Number 81. Defense. 15 yards. First down. Remember now it was a, a fourth and 12. They come barreling in. And he was blocked right into him and uh, took him down. Didn't mean to, but he was still blocked right into him. Well, he, he once he went into the air, he ran into one of his own teammates who no accelerated question. him towards the punt. No question. Hey, look who's here. The Shaq Daddy, huh? I did a lot of basketball games right over there to the left when uh, Shaq Man was playing for Dale Brown. He's something. <laughs> <laughs> He's always had a great oh, sense of humor. Ryan Perlou. On the field now. Here's Williams straight ahead with the 31 yard line. Picks up about nine yards on that play, and Chris Ellis with the stop. Don't underestimate what you're witnessing tonight from this LSU offense, guys. I mean, I, I just can't tell you. Virginia Tech, by the time it's all said and done, their defense will be looked at still as a great defense. But what we're seeing is an LSU offense that's maturing, 
and finding playmakers tonight that are going to help them down the road throughout the rest of this year. Perlou snaps it off complete short of the first down and LaFell the receiver we check in with Reese. All right, Brent, every week we honor the AT&T All-America Player of the Week, and you can get in on the voting. Just text the word VOTE to 87654 on your AT&T wireless phone. You access the nominees, you cast your vote, and you enter for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game in January in New Orleans. It's the AT&T All-America Player of the Week. And here it is, third and two, 945 left. And Perilou is up under center. Williams got the angle. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! That was third and two. He burst 32 yards. We've got to see Kalen Williams get on the field and get more of an opportunity to make these kind of plays. What acceleration. He's running away from a DB, one of the fastest linebackers in the country. And how about the block by early Doucette, the great wide receiver, downfield 25 yards, locking up the Virginia Tech secondary and opening up the rest of the running lane there for a touchdown. Colt David adds the extra point, and so remember, it was the personal foul roughing the punter that kept that scoring drive alive. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. Well, we welcome you back to Baton Rouge with Kirk Herbstreit, Lisa Salters. I'm Brent Musburger. Glad you were along with us. And uh, I think they can pack up the equipment, boys, and get on the road. I know you and I are thinking about Lincoln already and uh, looking at those uh, USC Trojans, the number one team in the country. Next. That'll be fun to see USC the next week after witnessing LSU and seeing the speed of this football team and be able to compare them next week to SC. Ball is on the tee and Royals back deep again for the Hokies. He's been busy. When you put 41 up there. You're the ace. Got this one at the four. Now sprints back out to the right with his speed. And he has pushed out about another fine return uh, from Royal. And you know, Lou Holt said something that applies to Virginia Tech tonight. When you're in a conference and you're playing a non conference game and you lose this, you still got something to look forward to. The Virginia Tech's going to be a force in the ACC. Well, they definitely are going to be a force in the ACC. The ACC is wide open. That's why I thought this second half was so important for Virginia Tech yeah. to try to build a little bit of momentum and realize, hey, you lost this one. It's not the end of the world. It's a non conference game. Regroup and give yourself a chance to try to get healthy and get your confidence back before you get ready for the ACC. Meanwhile, LSU stocking bigger game and that would be another shot at a uh, at a national title and uh, here comes the end around Royals going to throw off of it receiver incomplete and uh, you know one of the things that really plays into it is the schedule who do you play at home who do you play on the road and Kirk uh, what do you make of this now what I make of this is all of the tough games with the exception of one are here at Tiger Stadium South Carolina Florida. Auburn Arkansas at all at home. Look where they have to go on the road. Alabama with Nick Saban. That game I believe is in early November the first weekend in November and everybody's bracing in the SEC for Nick Saban and out in Alabama going up against this LSU team. Both teams have an off week right prior to that meeting. The coaching staff here stressed that down here over the middle and Morgan got the first down. He crosses the uh, 45. One thing that did not show up on the schedule is the trip to Atlanta to play a rematch against the Florida Gators in the SEC championship game. That could be a huge game in the landscape of the BCS, something that USC does not have to deal with. But you imagine LSU being this dominant all year and then going again to play Florida and Atlanta in a rematch? But 
but there is something that USC does have to deal with and uh, we'll show that to you right after this first down young Taylor flashes to the side incomplete and that is the fact that in the Pac-10 now you play a complete round robin they've got to go all the way through now Idaho of course they've already won Washington State Stanford Arizona Oregon State you said but look at that look at that Oregon date down there to, to me it's the opposite of what LSU has tough game next week on the road tough game real tough game after seeing Oregon last week we saw Cal's offensive ability Arizona State's a very good team UCLA at home in a rematch of last year's game where the Bruins knocked them off it's not as if SC is just going to walk to that championship game incomplete I would say just off the top of my head uh, this is not has nothing to do with it. I think the SAC is the toughest conference. I think USC has a tougher schedule because of just because on the road. Yeah they they've got to go the through the road. Yep. And they got to play everybody. And it's hard. Remember yep. Oregon State beat them in Corvallis last year right before UCLA right. knocked them out of the championship. Game. I mean it's tough and, playing all those conference. And the debate always goes on who has the best conference and, and I think everybody objectively agrees the SEC top to bottom again it's the toughest conference toughest grind the fact that LSU gets most of it home at home with the you know they got to go to Alabama guys the Pac-10 is closing the gap this yes, year that, that is a deep conference that fans I think are going to really start to appreciate teams like Oregon and Washington had snap Taylor tried to recover finally down at the 50 and we check in with reach. All right Brent well LSU's got a blowout work and we've got some tight games elsewhere Wisconsin at the moment has the nation's longest winning streak at 10 in a row. They're trailing Vegas deep in the third and on ESPN 2 South Florida just got its fifth turnover against Auburn. They're right on the doorstep and trying to take the lead seven and change to go there. This would be a dark season for the Big Ten if Wisconsin goes to Vegas and loses to the Rebels out there. Wisconsin and uh, Penn State and Ohio State believed to be the cream as we set signals for the fair catch at the five yard line and they take over and I'm very very surprised that the Rebels are sticking with them out there. I think, uh, I think all of us are. Yeah. It's a shocker. The boys are paying attention now to the casinos <laughs> now. Let me tell you that now. Okay. No doubt about that. <laughs> That's time out. The 25 greatest players in college football history presented by IBM coming in one week. IBM getting it done. Well the top 25 was voted on by a blue ribbon panel of former coaches players media members and we'll reveal 25 through number one over the course of the season announcing the greatest player in college football on the last week of the regular season and won't that touch off an argument or two around the country. Mm. I'm going to tell you something Archie Griffin's got to be on that list Richard Murphy was there. That's a tough that was a tough list. I, mean, I, I was looking at that for about so two I. weeks. It's hard. Man, how do you how do you settle on just five? Twenty five. Yeah, they wanted us to vote for just five, yeah. and then they're going to announce twenty five. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, was, that rascal Billy Cannon, he was big now. <laughs> There's your guy. There you go. So I'm old school. Well, I mean, real. How, old how about Herschel Walker? Well, how can you count him out? I mean, yeah. he was unbelievable. But Roger Staubach. Yeah, Roger. Man, he was fabulous. And uh, play fake to Murphy, and Paralu takes it around trying to get a first down. Steps out right at the marker. I give you so. Uh, Ice serves a, a penalty flag down, and uh, you know Flint's Flint's night is done, and uh, he's getting a little ice over here. They've got a very comfortable league and lead. He came up a little gimpy on that, and uh, I suppose that's the kind of thing, Kirk. If they really needed to have him on yeah. the field, he'd be fine. But you might as well. Any, anytime you see a quarterback who's a senior who's got a 41 to 7 lead late in the fourth quarter he's got a little ice on the ankle and he's got a big smile on his face that's a precautionary move. There's another freshman on the field for LSU that they told us about Richard Murphy is the running back folks he's number 26 coaches wanted to get him on the field. They say that uh, and here's a here's a surprise he's got speed. <laughs> There's a shock. Here he comes now but he had, uh, just couldn't do a thing he couldn't get started and uh, Martin brought him down and that's one of the brothers Orion Martin making the stop and uh, we check in with Reese. All right Brent Arizona State and Colorado Colorado jumped to a 14 nothing lead is now 
14-13 when Rudy Carpenter, look at that catch in traffic by Kyle Williams, and Arizona State has a five-point lead at the half. Vegas still with a one-point lead. South Florida missed another field goal. They're one for five on field goal tries tonight. On ESPN2, South Florida and Auburn tied at 17. Beware Mr. Dennis Erickson down there in Tempe, folks, and uh, give him a couple of years. A couple of recruiting classes full of some of those JC rascals. <laughs> they be year, smoking, man. You, if you look at their schedule this year with Rudy Carpenter at quarterback, it's a realistic chance they could be 8 0 before they really get tested. Exactly. They, they've got a team this year that they feel can, can do some things in the Pac 10. Demetrius Bird was the wide receiver. And uh, he's a speaking of JC, he transferred in here to JC. And they were looking for wide receivers. Paralu keeps it. He's a strong runner, just short of midfield. Well, Kirk, take us through some of the key games today. Well, watching these games today, the big story, of course, Michigan starting the season 0 and 2. But the thing that stood out to me is Dennis Dixon and the Oregon Ducks came in to prove a point, and they looked great. Keep an eye on them this year. Washington all of a sudden off to a great start with a sound beating of Boise State. Oklahoma is one of the top two or three teams in the country. They look better and better. Every time you see them, they seem to have more athletes. And South Carolina and Georgia, a game that was low scoring. And what is it about Steve Spurrier when it comes to taking on those Georgia Bulldogs? And uh, here's Supersonic. Number eight is checked back in, Kirk. He's, <laughs> he is the parallel. Right. There's the handoff. They try to cut him a hole. He cuts back into the middle. Now looks off to the right. And that was a that was a tackle that might have saved six. DJ Parker wrapped him up right there. Oof, he takes your breath away. That's that's 12 more yards for Mr. 1002. Yeah, I think LSU needs to focus a little bit more on recruiting on some speed. They, they've got a really, I mean, they've got some good people, some good players, but they can just try it's, to get a little bit more athletic ability. It's become a game of the stopwatch, hasn't it? <laughs> if God. anything has changed in the last shame. decade. It is the unbelievable speed and not just the speed stirs the big fellas can move now too. He snaps that off the bird. That's his second catch and that's a first down to the uh, 29 yard line. Looking ahead the next week. First time that Michigan and Notre Dame. Both have been on four game losing streaks. First time ever. You're a little bit more of a history buff than me. But, but you know what I was thinking at this time. Who's going to be the favorite. Oh, it's going to be painful. I mean, who's going to be the favorite next Notre Dame. Well, Michigan's at home now. What do you I do? Know. I, I mean, know. That, uh, that Michigan team is, they're on the ropes. They, they, they really are on the ropes. You had stepped outside when Lloyd Carr's sound was played. Reese and the guys played it. Well, he's got his backup. You know, I yeah. can tell. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's a two of the winningest programs of all time. Oh, for they are the, yeah, exactly. One and two. Well, Although you know, somebody somebody told me that Michigan cuts a corner on its overall. I don't have to talk to my man Mo about that my, my Michigan guy. Well, it was national championships. That was the that was the issue with them. Yeah, I remember that wasn't wasn't big. Here he comes. Holiday and uh, he stopped at the line of screen. They got a guy. They hit him just as they can. DB brings him down, number 11. Well, oh, that's the thing. If if you can get to him, he's going down. He's 155, 160 pounds. How do you think the uh, parking lots are right now? You think there's any adult yes. beverages going down out there? If there's Lisa still, come back. If they're still standing. Did she I, come back? I think she did, yeah. Out there with the TV set and everything. Lisa's back. There she is. Lisa's uh, back. All right. Hey, all right, Lisa. How was it? Was it real muggy down there, Lisa? Oh, or? my gosh. You can't. And they were mad at me because they said, oh, you didn't make it sound like fun. Yeah, it would be fun, I guess, if I were drunk like they were. But <laughs> I was a little hot. I was hot. It was Touch. muggy. Perilou fires a touchdown. That's 28 more yards. And this one went to Terrence. Tolliver. Tolliver. You know that young man? Oh, he's he's the I number, don't have him. Number on my one, number one so deep. I don't have him. He's the number one rated wide receiver coming in. Coming into college football this year. We get a little glimpse of him last week against Mississippi State. And again, it's Cam Chancellor, the safety, out of position and allowing Tolliver to get right behind him for an easy touchdown pass. And that's something you're going to see in the future 
with Ryan Perilou, who's one of the elite players coming out of high school, and Terrence Tolliver. Terrence Tolliver could have gone to any school in America and decided, of course, to come here to Baton Rouge. Yeah, they'll be celebrating tonight in Baton Rouge. ESPN's College Football Prime Time, brought to you by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. ESPN Game Plan lives here. And Bex, four natural ingredients, one distinctive beer. Bex, life is what you choose. Oh, we welcome you back to Baton Rouge. 48-7. The NBA, they call it garbage time. Just went 94 yards with a backup quarterback in nine plays and 425. Total yards for LSU tonight, 599. For Virginia Tech, 117. Tech averaged two and a half yards a play. LSU, 8.3. And they changed return men. Come with one of their wide receivers, and we check in uh, with Reese after that return by Brandon Dillard. All right, Brent, on ESPN2 right now, freshman Wes Byram of Auburn just put the Tigers on top with a field goal, 20 to 17, just under three minutes to play. As I told you earlier, South Florida is one for five on field goals tonight. Matt Grothy and company out of timeouts, but about to get the ball back. Great one going on ESPN2. All right, Reese. Great one on ESPN. That's it. And, uh, you know, we're in historical territory. Negative as far as Frank is concerned, but it, uh, his career at Virginia Tech, unofficially, the previous biggest setback was 38 points. And he's down 48 to 7 here. Five yards, still first down. Still first down. So, uh, you know, Frank has had that lunch pail, which certainly this year takes on special significance because the names of the 32 victims of that horrendous massacre back on April 16th are all carried inside that lunch pail, and he's brought a stool out this year, which uh, represents the team. And uh, then on Thursday, the uh, the game ball from from last week's home victory was uh, brought out to the memorial and uh, in honor of you none of us is as good as all of us and that is the slogan for this year's hokey team and of course the, uh, the youngsters on this football will carry the memories of those 32 victims all season long a couple of those youngsters were very familiar with the with the football team as uh, Taylor the quarterback takes out of bounds one of them one of them was a band member who we happened to meet down in Jacksonville when Virginia Tech played to Florida State in an ACC championship game a couple of years ago and I remember he came down and uh, how nice he was I think I think all of us have been around the uh, the Virginia Tech community for anything we're, we're so touched by what happened and uh, and tonight, of course, you know, there's some long faces for a lot of different reasons, and that's they're just losing a football game, and uh, not what happened back on April 16th. But they will carry the names with them all season long. And uh, now, Kirk, let me switching back to football. Let me ask you this: Is there a quarterback controversy? at Virginia Tech or has the youngster Tyrod Taylor uh, taken over for Sean Glennon. Um, I think that Frank will have to wait and see how, how do you read that. I, I think it'll be a wait and see approach. I think that'll be one of the first questions that everybody wants to know uh, in Blacksburg. They've been the fans have been calling for Tyrod Taylor. They want to see him get his chance. I personally think there's still a lot of football this year to be played. And uh, I think the, I think the torch may have been handed to Tyrod Taylor. And uh, Lisa, you know, we talk about the uh, terrible, terrible circumstances surrounding the Virginia Tech campus, but uh, we can't forget the right down the road. There was a hurricane, and a lot of victims were flown up here. That basketball arena where Shaquille O'Neal played 
That was uh, that, be that became an emergency hospital up here. That's right, Brent. And in that Virginia Tech tragedy, it really touched people all over the country. And and th that student that you were talking about, the band member Ryan Clark, he and another young woman who was killed, Leslie Sherman, they were part of a, a group of Virginia Tech volunteers who actually came up here to the bayou to help out when Hurricane Katrina ripped through here a couple of years ago. So naturally, when the folks here at the church ministry that worked with them, when they found out about what had happened, they were devastated. What they have decided to do is to rebuild a home that was destroyed by Hurricane Katrina and name it the Virginia Tech House in honor of Ryan Clark and Leslie Sherman. And now Monty Farb, the woman, the 80-year-old woman who lives in the house said, you know, those young people came down here to help people like me, and it's just a shame that their lives were cut short so quickly. Yeah, indeed. Thank you, Lisa. Third down and, and ten now, and Taylor on the sprint, throwing across the body accurately, and uh, that would be Ike Whitaker, who was a quarterback here last year, making making that catch. He's a young man with uh, with athletic ability, but now the coach's job will be to return back to Blacksburg and. Uh, you know, restore the confidence with these young men. It's a, it's a quality coaching staff. I'm yep. sure that will happen up there with Frank and uh, and the rest of his assistants. They 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 were overmatched today. I Absolutely. think that uh, you know, it, it, you and I would say if they played ten times on a neutral There's site, we probably would think LSU would win eight or nine. Yeah. Now Blacksburg would be a little bit different story. Yeah, but there. neutral field. Right. I, but you look at the future. They have Ohio University coming up, William and Mary, North Carolina before they go to Clemson. Go back to your question. That might be a pretty good time to get Tyrod Taylor some reps and to try to build an offense around his versatility and around his dynamic athletic ability to try to move into the future because Sean Glennon and I like Sean Glennon. I, I, I think he's a guy that's that worked hard last year. He's 11 and four now as a starter. But even before he came into this game I think his confidence was a little bit rattled and I think the way Taylor has played tonight the poise that he's played with. I think he deserves an opportunity. Those next three games, Ohio, William and Mary, and North Carolina, would be three, and they're all at home. Would be three great opportunities to get him more and more experience until he can finally take it over. I think one of the things that needs to be addressed on a uh, on a broader standpoint, Kirk, and mm -hmm. I know that the coaches didn't like the rule changes a year ago because it took plays away from the game. But what I am starting to sense is that some of these games are starting to run a lot longer than last year's games. Uh, and, you know, I've talked to trainers who wonder about keeping youngsters out on the football field. You know, it's a, it's a collision sport, obviously, for as long as, uh, as what we face with this. I think the, uh, the administrators and the coaches are going to have to get together. And, and then try to get this to a reasonable time frame. I don't think you want these football games running 330, 340. And uh, let us check in with Reese. All right, Brent, getting right down to the end. Auburn and South Florida right now. Delbert Alvarado has missed four of his five field goal attempts tonight. Auburn's defense just made a tackle on the one yard line. And Jim Levitt let the clock wind down in a 20 to 17 game. South Florida is now going to try to tie the thing up and send number 25 Delbert Alvarado out there to try to send the game potentially into overtime. 59 seconds to go. We'll let you know what happens. All right, Reese, and here it is incomplete on the long pass. Sounds like a way over ball game going on over there. <laughs> Great aerial <laughs> shot today, courtesy of our friends at Outback Steakhouse. The Outback Steakhouse airship, the Bloomin' Onion. Provides aerial coverage for sporting events uh, across the country. Let's ask our producer Bill Bonnell on this one monitor if we can give us the insight. <laughs> I was going to say, can I we get back done, to the I think we're done with the ISO. Can we get <laughs> oh, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> Some pretty good updates. The final seconds now ticking away. There were some interesting storylines. Taylor. Oh, that would have been a pick six. And that youngster held on. That's Chris Hawkins. He's a sophomore from Walker, Louisiana. Only a sophomore backup corner over there. And uh, oh, he knows. Tie score, we're told. Reese just shouted down the line. He made that one. <laughs> there's, there's Bo there's Pelini. Bo Pelini. Now, now, the last time I was here with that Ohio State game in the 80s, Bo Pelini was, Bo Pelini <laughs> was a freshman safety on that team. Bo he was playing for Earl, yeah. Earl Bruce now. Yeah. 
Bo Pelini is. And yeah, he was one of your captains, yeah. right? Yeah, he was. He was. On the run, in zone, incomplete and off. The fingertips of Brandon Diller. So LSU stakes its claim to be in one of the top two teams in the country, and it doesn't seem to be any doubt about that here tonight. They were a big favorite and they backed it up 48 to 7. They've given up one touchdown in two games. Record setting territory against Frank Beamer. Now Jimmy Wilker comes in to run the clock out. He'll just take the knee down here and there it is. So Les Miles and LSU. Beat Frank Beamer. Virginia Tech here tonight and they did it handily as the uh, coaches here will will meet in midfield. There's a young man with fine future Tyrod Taylor. Again our final score 48 7 LSU over Virginia Tech is presentation to ESPN the worldwide leader in sports for Kirk Herbstreit and Lisa Salters. I'm Brent Musburger reminding you that next Saturday night on ABC we'll be in Lincoln Nebraska the number one team USC pays a visit to the Cornhuskers. We'll see you then coming up next is Sports Center. So long everybody.